Finally sealed Arctic Blast, cooled off Buffalo in the shootout to win the game 8-7. Now the Stampede are in Minneapolis, hoping their hard-hitting style will lead them to the finals. Buffalo, the class of the Atlantic Division this year, despite losing a league-high four shootout games. That theme continues in the playoffs, but now it's do or die. Last night, you know, we just tried to get two cute things didn't happen. Tonight, we're going to go back after them and take the body early, go after them, and uh, I'll tell you, if we play effectively, we're going we're gonna to be very physical tonight and make sure good things happen. The Arctic Blast are the craftiest team in the RHI. Incredible on the inline. Their speed helped them lead the league in scoring. Mini blew away the competition. They haven't been as dominating in the playoffs, but there is one constant, winning. Yeah, last night's game was an extremely close checking game. It was, uh, you know, right down to the last shot where we ended up winning in the shootout tonight. You're going to see exactly the same type of game. You're not going to see any blowout. So it's going to be an extremely close game and a fun game to watch. Tonight, from the Twin Cities, two teams with nothing in common except the desire to get to the championship series. One team well, the Eastern Conference Final, next on The Deuce. Center tonight, the Eastern Conference Final as the Buffalo Stampede take on the Minnesota Arctic Blast in game number two. Hello again, everybody. Craig Benervini. Great to have you with us for our playoff coverage of Roller Hockey International. And if you could pick two teams with different styles to test them, this would be the matchup. You got the physical tough play of Buffalo, and you got the high-flying, unparalleled play of Minnesota. As Coach Chris McSorley of Buffalo said, this is beauty and the beast. And the beast part was Buffalo indeed. Minnesota led the league in scoring this year. Buffalo led the league in penalty minutes. Stampede are going to have to stay out of the box tonight to have a shot. Now, two guys Buffalo will have to worry about, no question about it. John Hansen, for one, for Minnesota. He leads the RHI in playoff scoring with 10 goals and 19 points. They also boast the league's leading scorer in the regular season, number 11, John Young. Let me tell you, this guy is crafty with the puck. He's got some great hands as well. Now, Buffalo needs to win not only game number two, but they'll have to force a 12-minute mini game. We'll have that for you right here live tonight. Buffalo lost 5-4 in a shootout in the regular season to Minnesota. 8-7 last night in a shootout. So certainly, they have a lot of confidence because they lost two close games. And for more on the Stampede, let's go to our partner down on the surface, Jim Fox. Jim, where are you? Well, I'm in a very familiar position to the Buffalo Stampede. I'm in the penalty box. Buffalo led the RHI in penalty minutes during the regular season. But well, we talked about that constant theme in playoff hockey. It doesn't matter what type of hockey. You have to be disciplined. You have to stay out of the box. Buffalo is a big, strong team, not only in that hitting department, but in the clutch and grab department, trying to slow down Minnesota. A couple of guys to keep an eye on. First of all, back on the defense, a guy who's just an anchor, a very solid player, number 94, Alex Hicks. He does it two ways, good offensively and defensively, mostly on the outlet pass. He gets the offense going for Buffalo. Now, speaking about offense, their leading scorer, John Beccarelli, has eight goals already in the playoffs, four of those goals on the power play. He has a big, long stick, and he uses it to use a big shot, especially the one-timer on the power play. We've talked about it already. Buffalo is big. They have to slow down Minnesota. We'll see what happens. Back up to you, Craig. Okay, Jim, this should be a fun one tonight here from the Target Centers. The fans have the front row seats, and they're getting ready for the Eastern Conference Final. It's the Minnesota Arctic Class against the Buffalo Stampede. Next, live on the Deuce. Hey, roller hockey is the hottest sport in America, and only one magazine goes end-to-end -end with all the action. Roller Hockey Magazine. Subscribe now for the most up-to-date, in-depth roller hockey coverage available. The hottest products, surefire tips to improve your game, the latest news and events, hockey humor, an inside look at the RHI pros, and more. Plus, you get an extra issue absolutely free. That's seven for the price of six. To subscribe, call toll-free 1-800-5-ROLLER. That's 1-800-5-ROLLER. Call now. Want to learn how to stick handle, skate, pass, shoot, pick out gear and avoid penalties? Yeah. You got to pick up the phone and get sticks and stones. What's that? Sticks and stones. The video. It's the hottest new inline roller hockey instructional video on the planet. No way. Way. Call 1-800-ROLLER-4. And call now. It's only $19.95 and we pay the shipping. Call 1-800-ROLLER-4. The Great White Shark is the most 
beard of all predators. Fueled by a voracious appetite, it relentlessly tracks its victims. Once the massive jaws grab hold, the shark begins ripping and tearing at its catch. Finally, using its immense size, the great white pulls its meal towards the depths of the ocean floor. The Canadian Football League on ESPN2. It's wild. Welcome back to the Target Center, Buffalo and Minnesota. Here's the Stampede lineup. Nick Matusi, the busiest goaltender in the RHI this year. Nemeth and Quest in the back line. Socia and Beccarelli up front. There's Nick Matusi, a fine playoff record. Nick is 27 years of age from Welland, Ontario. He had an excellent season for Minnesota tonight. The starting lineup, Bill Pine, another busy goaltender, led the league in wins. And Trigan Larson in the back line. The former NHLer, Al and Ron are up front. There's Bill Pine, 5 and 1 record. 704 goals against average, 25 years of age from Canton, Michigan. Luke Delvin, Mark Messier, no, not that one. And John Campion will handle the calls. Jim Howe, John Beccarelli, and we are underway from Minnesota. Good to have you with us tonight. Minnesota dumps it into the zone, and Buffalo quickly shuffles it right back toward the center line. Reed Larson will go over to play it. Beccarelli, the leading scorer, punches it up into the Minnesota bench. And we get a quick stoppage of play here in the first quarter. Chris McSorley is the head man of the Buffalo Stampede, and he will be heading on to Las Vegas, the International Hockey League. He got that job as the co-coach, and Jim, what a great run he's had. He's won two straight ECHL championships, and he won last year in the RHI with Anaheim, so he's going for his fourth title in two years. A lot of credit has to go to the head coach. When you talk about the Buffalo team, a lot of people mention a very close team. That starts at the head coach. He sets that team attitude right at the beginning of the season, and obviously it's carried over here in the playoffs. Minnesota dumps it in, played behind the net by Buffalo's Chris Bergeron in the 24. Now Wayland with a quick shot from the side. Jerome Bergeron, Corvo Neal. And in the corner, it's played by Tom Nevin. Nevin's got nine points so far. Buffalo coming in, Beccarelli in front, trying to get it teed up, but he couldn't really get it on his stick. And he went over the net with a chopping puck. Now in front, another chance. This time Nevin on his the side. Nicely by Bill Pye. We've seen Bill, despite all the accolades for the offense for Minnesota, he kind of gets... I don't know, shuffles the sides and don't forget to put a headline in his name as well. Bill Pye does the job with the timing. The key saves at the right time. Take a look at Larry Olam skating off to the bench. He's looking for a rest here. Buffalo coming back with some pretty good offense, a two-on-one, and Veccarelli had the chance, but he just missed out because the puck was bouncing a little too much. And then Bill Pye, the goaltender, came up big with a lot of aggressive play. He's a stand-up guy most of the time, Pye is, but he uses the poke check effectively, and we just saw that example. Aggressive when he needs to be. If not, he just stands up, plays the angles. Led the league and wins with 17 second minutes played and second in saves. Guess who was number one? Right, the guy at the other end, Nick Batusi, who has played all but 12 minutes in the playoffs so far. Here's David Chute coming down. Drops it back to Tim Hannes in front on the backhand, knocked down. Crumbles into the goaltender, knocked Batusi down. And again, we've seen this several times this year. Tough situation for the goaltender, Jim, who are very often like a stop sign for these players. The puck is passed off there, and it looks like the player was kind of directed into the goal. He didn't have much room to move. It was Tim Honest, but Vitucci doesn't really agree with that play. He wants the offensive man to get out of the way. A good attack, that time three on two for Minnesota. There's a look at Honest. He has everything in order, gets the Elbow pad back on, gets his gloves back on. He wants to put the puck in the net, not himself. Well, I think Tim never saw the red light there. He had his foot on the accelerator and uh, went right through it. Buffalo in the black, works it right back. Rick Corvo with a slap shot, pad face, pie, rebound shot. Wide of the net by Jason Cerrone. As he had a great chance. So far, Buffalo has had the better chances. Hanson back the other way. Nice move around Corvo. Shot stopped, though, neatly by Vatusi, who keeps it going and allows Buffalo to outlet, maybe get an offensive chance. Cerrone down the wing. That's one wide. Comes all the way back to the point. Hicks back in front for Hendry. Number 14, John Hendry. Now the corner, Jay Neal, an all-star goes after it. David Shute plays it up ahead and near the red line. Comes right back in by Mark Major. What a big task tonight for Buffalo, Jim. 
Can't beat up to win not only game two. And to win this game, they'll force a mini game. We'll have that right after this. A 12-minute game to decide the series. What makes it difficult for Buffalo is that they have to play aggressive. They have to try and take the body. At the same time, you can't run at Minnesota. They're too skilled. They'll skate right around you. Andre, quick one-timing shot by Majors stopped in front. Buffalo has a reputation of being an offensive club. Don't get fooled. They have some potent offense as well. Ten guys score ten goals or more. That is as many as Minnesota had. Ten double-digit scores. Reed Larson going off a lot of experience. There's an NHL veteran, Dennis Maruk. He had 50, 60 goal seasons in the National Hockey League. The way he styled his team, he talked to the players coming into the camp. Attitude on the players was score, score, score. So Maruk said, hey, I'm going to play to their strengths. I'm just going to make that style of team. So he has not held them back at all. He just wants them to look for offense. Stick handle, stick handle. Instead of moving your feet. Just keep moving your feet to me. Just keep moving your feet, all right? That's all right. How many coaches have you heard say shoot the puck? Giveaway opportunity here for Koshaw coming in. Thank you, partner. Nemeth coming in. It's stopped by Pi. Tom um, Nemeth, a defenseman who is known to be around that net. He was the leading scorer among defensemen in the ECHL last year, over 90 points. Larry Olin comes in. Other defenseman who can score. Stopped by Matusi. How much fun it must be, Jim, for the defensemen, even the goaltenders, to get on the scoring sheet. Meccarelli comes in. I know the locker before the game, Nick Batuzzi, who's got three points in the playoffs, has more points than about three stampede guys, and he made sure each one knew them. Going by Jay Moore, throws it across the surface quickly, but Leyland could not get to it, and Buffalo will bring it down. That's John Gluskin, number 23, he's dumped hard. Good check by Jay Moore. Rammed around the net. Minnesota coming out, 8-22. To go in the first quarter, Craig Benervini. Jim Fox, glad you joined us again. Playoff coverage. Just one game to go on our coverage after this one. The winner moves on to the championship final. Anaheim and Portland will begin their series tonight. And the winner will face the winner out here. And we'll have it for you. We'll tell you about that later on as Leyland throws it around. We get the whistle with an even eight minutes to go in the first quarter and so far nothing on the board from the target center if you play ice roller or street hockey then check out this special offer from hockey player the magazine for those who play each issue is packed with what you need to get the most out of playing the world's fastest team sport interviews with nhl stars and coaches playing tips from the pros equipment reviews conditioning drills new products and more Dial 1-800-652-0101 to subscribe. Order with Visa or MasterCard and receive your free bonus gift. 101 Hockey Tips. This booklet is a must-have source of winning edge hockey secrets. Subscribe to Hockey Player and improve every aspect of your game with special columns and departments for goalies, defensemen, forwards, coaches, and more. So whether you play on the ice or in the street, call 1-800-652-0101 and get ready to score. To subscribe, call 1-800-652-0101. A year subscription of 10 issues is only $15.95. Order now with Visa or MasterCard and receive your free gift, 101 Hockey Tips. That's 1-800-652-0101. In game one, Minnesota winning in a shootout, 8-7. to seven. Tim Hannes had the game winner. John Hansen had four goals. The power plays, a blast three for eight, the best one in the league this year at 60%. Stampede two for seven. Beccarelli with five goals. But Beccarelli tied it, Jim, with 18 seconds to go. And then Buffalo scored a goal at the buzzer. The players celebrated for two seconds. The referees waved it off. And I think everyone agrees that once you go into a shootout situation, the advantage goes directly to Minnesota. They have the types of players, the good, skilled, quick hands that can be effective on those breakaways. We talked about the matchup in the open. That is not a good matchup for Buffalo. Not only is Minnesota so skilled, but Buffalo now 2-5 and five this year in shootouts. Bergeron across the surface. Quick shot wide of the net by Tom Nemeth. Now Bergeron again back to the point. One timer hit the post. Big shot from the all-star Jay Neal. Number 44. Bergeron dumps it behind the net. Played by Jason Cerrone now, number 34. Jason dumps toward the net. John Hansen picks it off. John tied for the playoff lead with Jerry St. Cyr of Portland. 19 points. Shoot. Wheeling in. Throws it over to Hannes. And Jim, this kind of reminds me of the Atlanta-Minnesota start that we saw a couple of weeks ago. 
in the first round playoffs where the Arctic Blast could not get it going offensively. You can see how Buffalo's D is stymieing Minnesota here. Shoot across the surface. Over to Starter coming in wide of the net. This is a, a really an offensive machine so far this year. And Buffalo is bothering them. Henry was tripped, no penalty call. Henry circles back against the check of Jim Howe. And Henry comes in one-on-one. -on -one. Henry now, quick wrist shot. Good pad save by Pye. Again, Billy Pye as sharp as a tack. Reed Larson, longtime NHLer. Known for his big shot. Knocked off the uh, wheels. Not shooting quite as hard here. Nice pass in front, though. The backhand is Andringa dumps out. Penalty of coming against Buffalo. And Minnesota will go on the power play as Reed Larson set it up. Mark Major will head off for two minutes. There wasn't much aggressive play onto the puck. And we'll see the nice little backhand pass there by Reed Larson. Protection, get the leg out by Andringa. And Mark Major is forced to take him down by just chopping right through his leg. So good pass and good puck protection. Another look, kind of a delayed reaction play. And Andringa goes down. So Minnesota will get the first chance on the power play. Then Buffalo clears the front of the net. Great job there by Buffalo. And actually, Craig, I think Buffalo did a good job away from the puck, the one-on-one -on -one coverages, but too much control by Minnesota. They had too much time. Finally, Larson had time to make that good pass. Buffalo wants to keep Minnesota from getting the shots in front of the net, keep them to the perimeter, and force the shooter a lot. They're not going to wait and let them wheel and pass. Here's John Young, 11. Larry Olim at the point. A diamond formation intercepted nicely in front of the net and dumped down by Beccarelli. We just saw one of the keys for Buffalo on the penalty kill. They want to take away the seam, the cross passes. What Buffalo is going to do is probably give this man right here, the guy at the top of the diamond, the shot. Quickly shot from the other side. Two stops by Batusi. A tough one in front. As you hear, Kenny Baruch saying shoot up high on the goaltender. You're really blue. Young sent it down to Leyland. Back to the point, as Jim mentioned, they were looking for Larry Olin. They could not find him. Larry, the second highest scoring defenseman in the league, set a record with nine points against Minnes in Pittsburgh, rather, that 14-11 win in game two of that series. Olin, there's the big shot with the puck on its edge. Locked in front by Alex Hicks. Now back out, Jay Moore sets up Young. Nice defensive stop by Buffalo's Jay Neely gets Beccarelli the leading scorer. Shot, quick save, rebound is tipped aside by Bill Pye. 45 seconds in the Buffalo penalty. With scoring opportunities on both ends. Leyland back to Jay Moore. Wheels around Hicks. Still wheeling. Hooked nicely from behind by Alex Hicks, the captain who throws his way. Now we're looking for Olim again. And again, the seam cut off by Beccarelli. Up to Alex Hicks. Comes in one-on-one -on -one against Jay Moore. Around Moore. Nicely. He's in. Going shooting. Scores! What a goal by Alex Hicks. That's one for the highlight film. A defensive play leading to the offensive chance. And Hicks. A defenseman showing some offensive moves. It doesn't get any better than that move by Hicks. But it was a smart play. Good defense by Buffalo. Beccarelli with the outlet pass. Now watch the dipsy doodle come and pull and drag. And right there, Moore tries to get back. But from the first move, he was one step behind, one half step. Then watch the patience of Hicks right here. Goes to the forehand, waits for Pye to go down. Then he goes way up into the top of the net. Great job by Alex Hicks. They didn't have Hicks last night. He was out with a suspension, but he's back tonight. Shorthanded goal makes his presence felt. 15 seconds of the power play. Starter throws it across the surface to Hannes. Buffalo led the league in shorthanded goals this year with 19. And they had another one. They're second in the playoffs. Hannes throwing it across. You'll notice they try to set up the one-timer with a quick pass. We're even Steven again. Four on four. Quick shot. Stopped by Matusi. Throws into the corner. Play by... David shoot number 20. Now, Buffalo capturing again. John Henry dumps out to the center line. Mark Major plays it there. Honest over there. Starter throws him in hard into the glass. And that's going to be a penalty. Interestingly enough, though, is the referee away from the play that made the call. The ref near the uh, center line let it go. So a power play opportunity upcoming for the Stampede, who have already scored short-handed and they lead early in the first.
Live stock 94, Labor Day weekend, beach sports extravaganza, a universal celebration of beach behavior. Sunday at 8 p.m., turn on, tune in, kick sand. First penalty against Minnesota, Randy Scarta goes off. We thought it was going to be physical. Buffalo usually leads in hitting. We're going to let regular speed here, listen to this hit. That was Randy Scarta all the way. They called it boarding. I think the reason, because Scarta hit the player directly from behind, right square in the back, hard against the boards. First chance on the power play for Buffalo. All right, so Buffalo's on the power play. What a check on Hicks. And let's see how they work this diamond as well. Corvo is at the top of the diamond. He shoots it in time, makes the stop, and hangs on. With three minutes and 31 seconds to go here in the first quarter, a buck 49 on the penalty. Here's the playoff format. 16 teams started it all off in about the middle of August. Top four from each division made the playoffs. A two-game series, one in each city, a 12-minute mini game, which we could see tonight if Buffalo wins game two. Otherwise, we're all done. Also, of course, the home surface advantage going to the team with a better record. And in this situation, Minnesota has the home surface. However, if Buffalo should win the game, then they'll have the home surface for the final. Quick shot, Corvo stop, rebound in front, and Ty was able to grab it. Hang on, I'm talking to Grant Sonier, Jim, the head coach of Anaheim, with an interesting viewpoint. If his team gets to the final, they only have to travel one time to play in the championship. Minnesota or Buffalo, rather, would have to go out there and then come back. Last shot here on the power play by Buffalo. The screen is set up by Cerrone in front. Look at Billy Pye fight for that loose puck. He gave up the rebound, but he did a great job keeping the puck right at his feet. The rebound didn't get away from him, and that's extra important on the power play. When you're killing the penalty one man down, that man, the extra man, usually gets a good chance on the rebound. Not that time. Minute 27 on the penalty. Quick shot from the right no! side. Rebound, and they score! Yes, it was put in by Jason Cerrone, number 34. It just got across the line. And Buffalo, how many chances have they had already in this game where they've been pouncing on rebounds, and Pai has stopped everyone. This time, he could not stop Cerrone. Play before this, the rebound was controlled by Pai. It was a simple shot, real, not really a hard shot, from the off wing. And Cerrone's in front to bat in the rebound. Cerrone was playing in front all the way, looking for a screen or rebound. Well, he got the rebound. Just a chip shot on the backhand. Simple setup there by Buffalo on the power play. They went to the diamond. They had one man in front. That's all he wanted. And Chris McSorley very happy with what Scoring happened here. 2-0 Buffalo. Two Buffalo. Sergio will get one of the assists. Single assist number 255 remaining. Here in the second quarter, first quarter round, a tough start for Minnesota here. Young in the corner. Young coming out. Looks to set up something. Over to the point shot from Wayland is stopped. Minnesota just looks a step slower than they normally are tonight. Ahead of the play, Jay Neal waits for it. Ahead of the D as well. Centering it. He dumps aside by Corey Wayland nicely. Boy, he got the puck caught up in his uniform. And we get the whistle with 2.27 to go. There's Corey Leyland. He was not sure about playing in the RHI this year, but he's a local guy from St. Cloud, Minnesota. Went to St. Cloud Apollo High School, and he said one of the big things for him was to play here in front of the home crowd. The Arctic Blast, as you look at Dennis Baruch, almost all of the players except for two, and Dringa and Pai, are from Minnesota. So this is really a locally grown team and how well they have played. You think guys from Minnesota are better in chili sports, Jim, rather than summer sports? Huh? 2.20 to go. Buffalo leading 2-0 early going. Dave shoot coming down. Minnesota averaged 12 goals a game during the regular campaign. Another defensive stop for Buffalo. And Lenny Sosia comes in and crank one right off the side of that post again. As we approach the two-minute mark, first quarter. Turnover by Minnesota right at the center line. The forward's getting a little too far ahead. That's what happens when Minnesota gets in trouble. There's no outlet pass for the defense. That causes turnovers. Garner with it, throws it out. A lot of teams seem to play better, Jim, with their backs to the walls. And uh, we saw that with Atlanta against Minnesota. We may be seeing that from Buffalo. They cannot lose the first game. Of course, Minnesota wants to win it. But you think there's anything to that, that they come out here, they already won game one. And uh, 
they look a little short on the, de on the desire end right now. Well, you think you have things in control. I think you get a false sense of security every time you come back home, but you have to play the same game. Socio with a shot. Good stick save by Bill Pye. He's been tested. Socio again behind the net. Throws it over to Vecarelli. Bumped by Scarta. John gets it back to the point. Nemeth throws it there on the stick of Socio. Whistle behind the play. And I believe he's saying there was an offside pass, but it started from the Buffalo zone. Well, stay with the deuce after tonight's game for more of Anything Goes with Jim Rome and talk to tonight's guest will be Carmen Policy, president of the San Francisco 49ers, and Meldrick Taylor, who talk of his September 17th rematch against Julio Cesar Chavez. Don't miss it. Talk to live tonight at 10.30 after the game. There's Chris McSorley, his team in control. Actually, it's kind of Everybody funny. The they guy. scored a shorthanded goal already. McSorley told me before the game his team would be least, less aggressive on the penalty kill than they were in the regular season. Buffalo, another chance in front. Wide of the net on a shot attempt by Dave LeMay. Well, they're going to be less aggressive on the penalty kill, but it's not going to stop them even strength. But they did get that shorthanded goal. Buffalo really in control here in the first quarter. We are even strength here with 40 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Reed Larson dumped down and a penalty of coming. Going to be a holding penalty. And that is not the type of penalty that Buffalo wants to take. Dave LeMay, number 37, will go to the box. And it's the part of the game, the time of the game. Take a look at it. Reed Larson just looking for the loose puck. And LeMay just rides his back. Larson goes down. Holding will be the call on Dave LeMay. But Buffalo had it in control. The momentum was on, being Billy, controlled by Buffalo. Sit fucking at it. Come on, hold that rebound. And Denny Marook hopes his team can get the momentum back here with a power play opportunity. Once again, Buffalo will try to take away the seam pass, the cross pass. And Minnesota will, might be forced in taking a long shot. But if they give you that long shot, you have to take it, then go for the rebound. Jim Fox will be heading down to the benches. He's been getting in good shape. I saw him on the exercise bike this morning. You're ready to make that big move down there. And we'll hear from both of the coaches and the players during the game. Second and fourth quarter as usual. So Minnesota with that heralded offensive attack, especially in the power play, they get their chance here with 20 seconds to go in the quarter. John Young leading score in the league. Back to the point. Larry Olin setting up Young for the shot. Screen shot blocked in front. May have hit his own man. He had nothing to shoot at. It hit the back foot of Corey Leyland. Beccarelli out with seven seconds to go. Buffalo with a shorthanded goal already in the first quarter. Dominating play as Young shoots at the buzzer. And that'll do it. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the stampede at one quarter number one. Still three more to go, though, as they hope to move on tonight to the championship final. After one, Buffalo leading two steps. As the amount you spend with your Discover card goes up, your interest rate goes down, down, down with the Smart Rate Program. And only Discover Card has it. So use the Discover Card, where the percentages are always in your favor. To apply, call 1-800-DISCOVER. It pays to discover. In the next century, when we walk into a drugstore, what will we buy for pain? Advil. That's right. You see, the ingredient in Advil is the number one doctor-prescribed pain reliever in its class. That's what's in Advil, in non-prescription strength. No wonder doctors recommend Advil by name. Always will. That kind of relief is timeless. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. Alternative math. One for sandwich, plus one hash brown, plus one coffee equals $1.99 every day. Add it to your morning at Burger King. We may not be the world's number one fast food place. It just tastes that way. It's all right to sweat when we're working out, but when we're close, uh-uh. Cute or not, if he smells, it's over. Get a little closer with Arid, the anti-odor antiperspirant that helps keep you extra, extra dry. I trust Arid.
They're bad, they're cool, they're R-H-I-T shirts. Call 1-800-733-4976 between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for your limited edition Roller Hockey International t-shirt. They're only available through this special TV offer. Tie dyes, baseball shirts, team tees, tees for kids, and more. Quick, skate to the nearest phone and call 1-800-733-4976. Use your Visa or MasterCard to get your favorite R-H-I-T t-shirt. That's 1-800-733-4976. Order now, they're awesome. Good to have you back with us on the Deuce, live tonight as Buffalo leads Minnesota 2-0. After one quarter of play, Greg Benavini upstairs, Jim Fox working the benches now for the second quarter. First quarter action, there's the shots on goal, 16-7 for Buffalo, the scoring chances 10-4 Buffalo, face-offs are even, and Buffalo scoring on the power play. So Minnesota starts it off here. The clock has not moved yet. 1.20 to go on the power play chance. A little late start on the clock for Minnesota. Young in front of that shot stopped by Batusi. The penalty time has still not started. And I'll tell you something, Buffalo is going to have about five seconds tacked onto that penalty. Minnesota again sets it up. 0 for 1 in the power play. They gave up a shorthanded goal. Here's Young, the leading scorer, number 11. Goes to Larry Olim. They've got some huge scores out there. Jay Moore is back. Lost his edge. And Beccarelli nearly broke out. Back the other way, Leyland. Chris Rister flutters wide of the net. Now Young behind the net for Minnesota. Back to Jay Moore. Cross the surface to Larry Olim. Number 17 for Minnesota. Larry out of War Road, Minnesota. 25 years of age. Got a big crank. Shooting for the tip in front. And more tips it wide now Leland Corey over to Young trying to better his shot skitters off the stick Beccarelli may break out of here he's got the edge on Olin he comes in breaks around a back end score another shorthanded goal for Buffalo as John Beccarelli shows very clearly why if you have the head of steam in this game you're going to get past the guy who's standing still well, McSorley, the head coach of Buffalo, said his team would not be aggressive penalty killing. Well, he was lying because this is a second shorthanded goal by Buffalo and Beccarelli. Once he got the puck, he went all the way. He was thinking offense all the way, and he just skated by Olam right there. Bill Pye went aggressively with a poke check, but Beccarelli was ready for it, very patient to the back end, had a wide open net. So Beccarelli, who comes off a five-goal game against Minnesota, is number nine in the playoffs. And how about this? Minnesota has not scored in the power play, and they've given up two short and the goals in front shot. How'd that one miss? It went right through the net. The side of the net, I should say. David shoot at a wide open cage, and he missed it somehow. Man, how'd he miss that one, Jim? Well, Minnesota gets it. You see the nice cross pass. He has everyone going the wrong way, and he shoots it back through the crease. Oh. So it's not a situation where he wasn't bearing down, actually kind of bear down a little too much. I think that happens sometimes when you think you're going to get hit and you put a little extra on the puck, you're a little stronger on the puck to try and counteract that hit. And he shot it wide. Now the officials at the penalty box discussing something. Minnesota was up here on the bench yelling about having too many men on the ice. Perhaps they're talking about that now. There's David Shooter who's wondering how he missed it. John Beccarelli now leading the way with 21 points. Andy Rimsha of Portland, 19 points as the Rage try to battle Anaheim to get to the championship series. Hanson and all limited, Brian Downey with 17 points. Jim, I did mention that they were a little late in the penalty time. Is that what the argument's about? Down here with the head coach, Chris McSorley of the Buffalo Stampede. Chris, you told me before the game your team wasn't going to be too aggressive killing penalties. When the chance is there, they're going for the net. Well, I'll save confession for tomorrow here, Jimmy. I, 
I uh, didn't anticipate scoring shorthanded goals against a team that controls the puck as well as Minnesota, but we had a few breaks. They made a few costly turnovers. We went down and were able to jump on their net pretty quickly. Don't want to look back to last night's game, but last night you had a two-goal lead, then it got away from you. What can you do to try and counteract that tonight? All we got to do is stay out of the box, play with some intelligence, keep picking up the wings, uh, slowing things down through the neutral zone. I guarantee you the skill we have on defense is going to be the difference in tonight's game. Do we know what's going on here with officials right now talking about it? I think it's the game clock. Something went wrong? No, they, uh, somebody, somebody over there was caught cheating. Uh, it's uh, playing bridge over there, so I know the referee's over there to dock some points, so hopefully we can see that right away. You know who's winning? <laughs> right now. I think, uh, referees, too. Buffalo, none right now. If they're now. playing bridge, I think uh, the referees have the dummy hand. Is that what you call them? Yeah, they got the authority in this one. <laughs> okay, thanks, Chris. Thank All right, 10-19 to go here in the second quarter, and Buffalo leading 3 to nothing. Minnesota had the number one power play in the league this year, 65%. We didn't, no, we did not have five guys, Luke. Luke, Luke, I had a hold of my guy's jersey. There's, there's no fucking way you're going to do this. There's no fucking way you're going to do this. Talking about too many. What happened there, talking about, Craig, is the situation where the officials in the penalty box allowed Buffalo's penalized player to come onto the floor early. Now, that's a question of whether the off-floor off officials made the mistake. And we'll try to see him count. There's Buffalo. You see they have five players. There's no doubt there's two by the bench, and both of those players are coming on. The other three are right in the middle of the floor. But the issue from Buffalo's point is that the off-floor official, the official in the penalty box, allowed the penalized player to come back a little early. They got caught in a situation, but you saw it clearly there. Two men coming on the floor with three men already out there. Remember, in roller hockey, it's four skaters in one goaltender. Now Minnesota gets a chance again on the power play. Maybe they thought it was ice hockey again there for a moment. It is just about that time of the year. They have five skaters out there again. I'll tell you one thing, the clock definitely did start late, but Buffalo should not complain. They've already scored two short-handed goals as they go for a third. Alex Hicks had one of them, and Minnesota 0 for 2 in the power play, and they've given up two which is a really disgraceful for them in this kind of a meaningful game. Hannes, quick shot wide of the net. Comes all the way around to John Hansen. Hansen, Skarda. Hannes, the shooter out there. Shot flips over the uh, cage. And again, Beccarelli will get a chance to get it out. And Buffalo's thinking, oh, here. He's got a little edge on Skarda. Quick shot, score! Backhanded shot by Beccarelli! And Buffalo has three short-handed goals. And they laid it four to nothing. John Beccarelli is taking charge of this game. Chris McSorley, his head coach, says he's the best player in the league. Well, he's showing why right now. Not really taking chances, I don't think, because when he's intercepting the puck on the penalty kill, we'll take a look at it at regular speed. Look at him. Once he gets control, he knows what he has in mind, and that's take the puck to the net. He slides a backhand to the far side. You saw regular speed again. Bill Pye, the goaltender, got himself caught just hanging on the near post. And on the rollers, you can't shuffle as quick. Buffalo leads, four to nothing. Jim, Minnesota is not doing a good job. Beccarelli should not have even been able to get a shot on goal there. But he got the edge and got another great chance. He's going to have a chance at a hat trick, a natural hat trick. He comes with a pie. Another nice move. And this time, pie gets the stick on it. And did he ever? He lost the stick. It skittered away about 20 feet. And the Buffalo players are yelling that he threw his stick. Beccarelli looking for that third short hander. He may think that's the only way he can stop him now. Buffalo with three shorthanded goals in the first 14 minutes of this game. Moore scores to the point. Young was in the crease. They're going to wave the goal off. No goal. No goal. John Young was clearly in the crease, and the referee is waving off the goal. And the referee is emphatic. He had no time to make a decision at all. He waved it off. He had the washout signal going and more things going against the Arctic Blast setting it up. Watch for the crease. Young is there. He's in the crease. He was not pushed. He was coming out from behind. Now, there was no contact with the goaltender, but that does not matter. And the face-off is coming out into the neutral zone. And Dennis Marook pointing up to the clock right now. I think some more time. Number 11 coming out from the bottom left of your screen. One foot, two feet in the crease. And the goaltender is not necessarily hit. But you can see Petusi there, he has to worry. He feels that pressure there, and the goaltender did not move over. He couldn't because he felt the traffic. The goal is taken away. 
still 31 seconds remaining on this power play for Minnesota. Looked like it may have, I don't know, Jim, from this angle, tough to see, but it may have even grazed off the back of John Young, maybe hit the back of his pants. He was clearly in the crease. It's kind of a tough call. He may not have had anything to do with it, but that is the rule. You cannot be in the crease unless you're pushed in there. Going back out to the point. So Sparta has it. Minnesota has given up three shorthanded, one power play. Now they have one taken away. 11 seconds still in the power play as Sparta works it in. Nightmarish start. What hit the post this time? And Minnesota can't get any breaks. 8.20 to go in the second quarter. A very lively start. Jim Hahn is coming down. He shoots. Big head stop by Batusi. Stand up save there. And Jay Neal works it out. We are four on four again. David shoots pass. Picked off by Buffalo. That's Chris Bergeron. Dumps it back, quick shot, Cerrone. And a pass up by Pye. Gets the sarcastic uh, response from the crowd here. Now stolen by Bergeron. He comes in on a breakaway. Bergeron deking, holding, shooting. Stopped by Pye. He stayed with his man that time. And Buffalo getting way too many terrific scoring chances here against Minnesota. The bases are not smiling at the target center. Nice hat, too. 7.44 to go. Okay, guys, baseball or bass fishing? Baseball. baseball. Bass fishing. Hey, guys, watch this. Miller Lite presents professional bass ball. Oh! Watson calls for a fresh bass. There's the wind-up and the fish. It's a high fly bass. Brought to you by Miller Lite. If you can combine great taste and less spelling, you can combine anything. Here comes a play at the plate. You're out. Oh! To determine the full effect of motocross, the figure MX is added to horsepower as such, multiplied by RPM, squared by miles per hour, and divided by C, the commonly used representation of the stadium crowd. Of course, those who know sports know there's a simpler but no less accurate expression of motocross, a force best represented as ESPN2. We're down on the bench with Minnesota. Jay Moore, the captain. Jay, obviously a bad position. Four goals down. What's the plan? Well, at this point, it isn't too good right now, Jim. We're, uh, you know, we got down a little bit at the first period here. We just got to fight back and try to get a few goals. During the course of the year, we had the most goals in all of roller hockey, so we just got to concentrate on that and try to put some, uh, put some points on the board here. You got to talk about that power play. Short-handed goals are killing you. Any big mistakes there? Uh, I think during the course of the year, we were just, you know, we, we had a lot of success on our power play. And I think we're using that to our advantage, and I think we're a little bit too comfortable with it. You know, you, and Buffalo's pretty good shorthanded, and we should have been aware of that. But uh, I, think, I think we have enough time here to come back. All right, good luck the rest of the way. Well, no question about that, this big scoring team. But Hicks trying to make it 5-0. Now, shot score! It was knocked in on the rebound. I'm not sure if it was Hicks who got the stick to it. He got the first shot off. But Buffalo, pouncing on the rebound, makes it 5 to nothing. And if it keeps going like this, Minnesota will run out of time in a hurry. All kinds of traffic in front. LeMay was there, Big Mark Major was there, and Hicks was there. Look at the four check by Buffalo. They don't come at you real hard, but they play smart positionally. The first chance is stopped by Pi, and turning around was LeMay. Now, you're going to have to look at this one. If we had another chance, maybe, there looked like to me this time Buffalo had someone in the crease. It was not called this time. Take a look at it. Not the first chance by Hicks. Just off to the right is Big Mark Major, I believe, and he's standing right beside the goaltender. But this one counts, 5 nothing Buffalo. Jim, Bim, uh, Bill Pye should sue for lack of defense here. I mean, he has just been by himself. Too many great chances for Buffalo. And Pye has made several stops in the game. He might fault him for the Beccarelli shorthanded goal. But he has just been defenseless back there with Minnesota. Craig, I think the one big mistake that Minnesota makes, their last man, the guy carrying the puck up the floor, he's not making a safe play. He's making a risky play, turnover, and right back on the goal. Excellent point. Leyland comes in, trying to work around Nemeth. Penalty of coming on Buffalo. And Minnesota will get a power play. And they might decline it here, Jim. <laughs> they should. One good thing, Craig, is that Beccarelli is the man who took the penalty. <laughs> so they don't have to worry about him scoring his third short-handed goal. But you're right, nothing has been going right for Minnesota. All of their big things, their big assets, have been going wrong. But they're going to go back here on the power play. Denny Maruk, I don't think he has many answers right now. 
He just has to get his team to get that one goal just to break the floor. Or usually you say break the ice. That's right. Then he might put the uh, wheels on at the half. 878 points, 850 NHL games over a 14-year career. There's John Beccarelli. John, not only a good scorer, he likes to work with old cars in his spare time. By the way, if you know anybody who wants to sell a Corvette in about 64, 65, give John a call. He's been looking for one. He just dumped his 77 Corvette. Right now, Minnesota looking like an old beat-up car here that is running out of gas. In front, Patusi makes a stop. Rebound, Jay Moore over there. And Buffalo knocks it over the glass and into the crowd. Off the stick of John Blessman, big six foot three inch defenseman. There's Johnny, likes to golf and bowl and watch Jeopardy. But there's nothing trivial about his game. He's a good one. Six minutes, 22 seconds remaining. Buffalo leading 5 nothing. Buffalo lost just one regulation game over the last 14 in the regular season. And a lot of the guys were saying that the loss last night might help them out tonight as you look at their score because they were so comfy beating all these teams in the RHI and occasionally that can knock you right down a level again when you lose one. Larry Olin with 6-12 to go. Minnesota being shut out. That's a huge story in and of itself through almost uh, one and a half quarters now. Olin goes in. Gambled again, as Jim was talking about. Neal comes in two-on-one. Neal has Hicks. Couldn't get it to him this time. Moore made the saving block. And Minnesota's got a three-on-one as a result. Leland over to Olin coming in. Shoots for the top shelf, and he missed it. And you could see he tried to pick it out, as Denny Marouk was encouraging earlier to his team. Bergeron around. Leland coming in. Shooting wide of the net. Minnesota comes back. John Young looks behind him. Now drops to Jay Moore. Five and a half to go in the second. Moore over to Larry Olim. Another 40 seconds on the power play. Olim waiting for the shot. He'll tee this one up. Didn't get good wood to it. Father took the puck near his skates. Olim set up. Rich shot. Good stop by Matusi. He hangs on. Nick making a big save there with 30 seconds to go in the penalty. The movement there by Minnesota wasn't too bad. They moved the puck around finally, but got to do a better job of getting in that scoring area, getting into the middle. Olin with a shot. Matusi has it all the way. He sees it all the way. There was not any traffic set up in front. Credit the big Buffalo defenders for that. Goals against average in the playoffs. Hey, no surprise. Right at the top, Nick Matusi. Just over six goals a game. Rob Laurie of Anaheim. You saw the rest of them. Goaltending is important at any time. But obviously, it's more important in the playoffs. And of course, Bill Pye, the guy that doesn't get much credit because of all the offense from Minnesota, he was fourth on that list. Tonight, though, down by five goals. 22 seconds power play, shooting wide of the net. And the goal judge probably can't believe he hasn't gone to work yet with Minnesota shooting at the net. Actually, he did put it on once, but the goal was waved off. Big shot, Hannes hit the post. And you can hear that one. 4.50 to go. Hannes throwing it into the corner. David Shute was over there. Buffalo could not clear. It's now full spent. Quick shot from the point. Off the stick of Scarno wide of that. In front. Backhand chance. Saved by Batusi on Hansen. Another good stop. Three on one possible here. Beccarelli coming out. He has Sosia behind him. Drops it back. Over the other side. Saved by Pye. And he hangs on. Alex Hicks looking for his second goal of the game with 4.25 remaining. It has been all Buffalo in the Twin Cities. 4.25 to go. If you play ice, roller, or street hockey, then check out this special offer from Hockey Player, the magazine for those who play. Each issue is packed with what you need to get the most out of playing the world's fastest team sport. Interviews with NHL stars and coaches, playing tips from the pros, equipment reviews, conditioning drills, new products, and more. Dial 1-800-652-0101 to subscribe. Order with Visa or MasterCard and receive your free bonus gift, 101 Hockey Tips. This booklet is a must-have source of winning-edge hockey secrets. 
Subscribe to Hockey Player and improve every aspect of your game with special columns and departments for goalies, defensemen, forwards, coaches, and more. So whether you play on the ice or in the street, call 1-800-652-0101 and get ready to score. To subscribe, call 1-800-652-0101. A year subscription of 10 issues is only $15.95. Order now with Visa or MasterCard and receive your free gift, 101 Hockey Tips. That's 1-800-652-0101. Well, now we're on the Buffalo bench with Chris Bergeron. Chris, tell me the situation. Did you ever expect to be up by five goals, five nothing against Minnesota? I don't think we expected to be up five nothing. I just uh, think that as a group, we wanted to come out and play hard. We felt we played, you know, adequate last night in Buffalo. We had to come out hard tonight and, uh, and establish ourselves, establish our, our finishing our checks and, and things like that. And we've been lucky enough to uh, get a couple of shorthanded goals by some uh, great efforts by Beccarelli and Hicks. And, and uh, Vitucci's playing big. So we, we just hope to continue this uh, the way it's going this first half. Four minutes, 12 seconds remaining. Quick shot from the point by Andringa. Steered aside by Matusi again. So often the defense will set up an offensive maneuver. And it does here. Hendry comes in the backhand. High makes the stop and kicks the net off the line. And we get the whistle with an even four minutes remaining in the second quarter. You can see the confidence in Buffalo. Now they're trying those one-on-one -on -one moves. Hendry this time, it starts deep in his zone. The puck comes into the middle. Now watch Hendry. Again, one thing on his mind, take the puck to the goal. Nice little move to the backhand. He didn't get much on the shot. By that time, he was on a bad angle. But confidence building here with Buffalo. They're not necessarily known for that big offense. They're not known for the one-on-one -on -one moves, but they're doing everything here tonight. John Hendry from Toronto, Ontario. Detroit Red Wings draft pick. Big check there on Jay Moore. Thrown off the fine play by LeMay. Henry was a 12th round pick of the Red Wings back in 1990. Also played in the NCAA champions at Lake Superior State in 92. Wayland comes in, gets around the D, making a shot up, holding, and he's steered aside by LeMay. And Buffalo comes out again. Mark Major, one-on-one, -on -one, Olim is back. Coming into the play is Henry, and Major couldn't get it to him. Major again, backhanding it. Played by Henry. Seven points so far in the playoffs. Also scored on 40% of his shots to lead the team. Six goals, just 15 shots. 3-12 to go. Second quarter, Buffalo. 2-0 after one, and it's three more. Here in the second, three shorthanded goals, one power play goal. Hansen comes in, easy stop for Vitusi. Now Cerrone in the corner is bumped, and it's played by Tom Nemeth. And Buffalo again on the attack. As Hens uh, Bergeron comes in, Bergeron breaks, scores! Chris Bergeron makes it 6 0 Buffalo. And Buffalo played up as a defensive team. Boy, they're pretty crafty in front of that net as well. Craig, what's happening is Buffalo is getting so much speed up back in their own zone that once they hit the center line, they're at top speed. And no matter what you do as a defenseman, it's very difficult. Oh, you saw right there Bergeron cutting in, but he had a good pick right in front of the goal. Another look at it. He builds up speed. Someone's going to try and slow him down. Now watch the pick in front. That allows Bergeron to cut right in front. One of the defensemen preoccupied with a man away from the play. Confidence, determination, and no wasted time by Buffalo. Out in front by six. Jim, Minnesota is playing the old Matador defense. They're not hitting anybody, and you cannot let another team in this league skate in untouched and get those kind of chances. Minnesota not known as a checking team well it's a glaring weakness obviously here tonight something better has to be done up the floor slow oh. the team down before they get going and Dringa throws toward the net minnesota is basically relying on their offense to be their defense this year when you're scoring that many goals it's a great defense but they're not scoring yeah. but score there's another goal talk about scoring lenny socio makes it seven and nothing buffalo they're going in from everywhere right now. This time, Socio takes a shot from outside, and Bill Pye, he's going to take a little rest right now. Nothing going Minnesota's way. It starts with a long outlet pass. And this is onside in roller hockey. Now the shot comes from the angle. Bill Pye way back in his goal. I think that's just a sign of a goaltender that's a little down. The confidence is in there. Look at Pye. He's back on his goal line, usually from the angle. Look at this. Two feet right in his field. Oh, no doubt. He's back too far, so any shot can beat him. 
You don't cover much room that way. And Bill Pye beat by the bad angle shot. That means nothing Buffalo if they win this game will play a mini game right after a 10 minute intermission. And we'll have it for you here on the news. Buffalo needs to win this game and the mini game. Minnesota after winning last night needs only to win this game here and right now that's going to take a major task but of course this game they are not out of it by any means if this was ice hockey you could pretty much write it off seven zip halfway through they wave off the illegal clear but minnesota scored 12 goals a game so if they could do that in the second half well they'll have a five goal win not that easy arctic blast coming down again larry olin has david shoot down the wing shooting bad stop by Vatusi. He did a nice job blocking the net. Here's Alex Hick. Alex has had a feisty playoff. Leads the team with 27 penalty minutes. Hendry coming in. Looking the other way. Stopped by Pye. And that puck probably looks like an ant coming at him. It's been tough to stop. Well, the Western Conference, here's a preview of the Portland Anaheim, how they got there. The Rage defeated the Calgary Rad. Two games to one in the conference semifinal. Andy Reimscher, 17 playoff points. He is tied with Johnny Hansen of Minnesota for the lead. Anaheim defeating LA two games to nothing. That exciting game we had last week on ESPN. And the Bullfrogs are the only undefeated team in the playoffs. Jim, I know we haven't got a look at Portland, but do you think Anaheim is going to be tough to beat out West? Well, Anaheim plays that smart game. They're the defending champions. They don't really flash anything at you, but they're solid in every area. The scoring and tough hitting, they play it tight. Minnesota does not play it tight. They haven't had to, though, this year. Good check going on to Randy Scarter. And they're having their problems here tonight on the home surface. Shoots pass picked off. Buffalo two on one again. LeMay coming down. LeMay waiting. LeMay, nice move. And Pye was able to just get a piece of the shot. And LeMay had him beat again. Dave LeMay, 20 years of age, just recently turned 21. Well, CFA Primetime Football is back Thursday at 8 p.m. ESPN will give you the best seat in the house as the eighth-ranked Arizona Wildcats visit the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Arizona coming off a 10-2 record and the Pac-10 co-championship. So there'll be quite a handful for Jamal Cox and the Tech defense. CFA on ESPN after Russell Athletics weekend kickoff show Thursday night live at 8 p.m. Eastern. Here, 32 seconds remain. Second quarter, Buffalo shutting out Minnesota. That would be story enough. They have also put the light on seven times behind Bill Pye. Three shorthanded goals and one power play goal. Johnny Hanson as Minnesota looks for one. The Tim Honnett. Works around Corvo. Now the puck goes to the stick of Jay Neal with five seconds. And Buffalo will dump it down. And that'll do it for the first half. Wow, what a humbling first half for Minnesota. Buffalo whitewashing Bill Pye and company with seven goals in the first 24 minutes. And they have a substantial lead at the half. Back in a moment from the Target Center. Why get only half the workout on an ordinary treadmill when you could get a total body workout? Introducing the incredible new WalkFit from Nordic Track. WalkFit's unique design lets you exercise your upper body and lower body at the same time. You get a fast, effective, total body workout that burns up to 1,000 calories per hour. Whether your goal is to lose weight, tone muscles, or relieve stress, you can do it all with the WalkFit total body treadmill from Nordic Track. WalkFit gives you a 53% greater cardiovascular workout than on ordinary treadmills, and you can burn up to 79% more calories. And WalkFit has no motor. It's safe and easy to use. Unlike motorized treadmills, you control the pace. There's no herky-jerky starts and stops. Call our toll-free number now and receive a free information pack video and full-color brochure showing how you can get started on an enjoyable exercise program you'll stick with. Don't settle for half the workout when you can get a superior total body workout with Nordic Tracks WalkFit. Call today and get a 30-day in-home trial and two-year limited warranty. After all, it's from Nordic Track. Talk some baseball right here on Talk 2. Pick up the phone, give us a call right now. First stop, Indiana. Bob, you're on Talk 2. Throw me your guy. 
hot here in Indiana. Thanks, Bobby. Keep moving. California. Don't worry. What's up, Nick? You're a brick. Man, you got shoelaces in your mouth. Couldn't miss that on top two. What was that? Jim Rome on top two. Live every weeknight at 10.30 on ESPN2. Greg Minervini back at the half at the target center. Minnesota shut out at the half. Buffalo leading 7-0. We're going to go down to the locker room in the stampede. Some smiling faces, I'm sure, but their work isn't over yet. Jim, take the spin. Make sure we're coming back, picking these guys up in the middle to the defenseman. We're going to be all set because that's where our skill lies right here tonight. The opportunities we're giving them are through the turnovers. We eliminate the turnovers. We're going to support as long as we can. All right, Chris, obviously a great period. I don't think anyone would have expected that kind of surge from your team. But at the same time, I don't see you backing down at all. You still no. go, go, go. But a team that's skilled, you have to make sure you give them a little hate sometimes. And a lot of times you let this team relax a little bit, they're going to go out there and play relaxed. We created our opportunities because of the fact we were able to eliminate the, the outside lanes, keep things congested in the middle, and the skill on defense really came through that, that period. The front of the goal, only one chance against. Otherwise, everything else clears out. Yeah, we want to make sure we let our side prevail in front of the net, and we got a little ugly with the sticks and uh, made the wood, put the wood in the soft spots in their arms and uh, kept them away from the front of the net. And we give this, uh, give Nick Fatusi, our goaltender, for perimeter shots. He's going to go up big for us every time. All right, Chris, I'm going to try and walk around here and get some uh, words from some of the players. We're over here with Dave LeMay. Dave, again, we've been mentioning with a lot of people that no one expected this type of a situation. Do you have any words of wisdom just how it did happen? I don't know. I think we just knew we had to win this game to stay in it, and uh, the guys just come out flying. Anything else you got to keep your mind on? I don't know. Does your mind automatically right now shift to the 12-minute mini game? No, not at all. These guys, uh, best offense in the league, they can score goals, you know, whenever they want, pretty much. So we just got to play good D and keep going. Does that think? may hurt Minnesota because they're so high powered they think they can score so many goals get into this tight situation maybe they're not used to it I don't know you know Nick's playing well you know we're keeping shots to the outside just got to keep doing that all right well thank you very much we're going to move over here to Lenny Saccio it's Lenny a lot of action in front of that both ends of the floor in front of your goal nothing happening but I saw you down in front of Minnesota's goal a couple of times tough action down there too yeah, we're getting our breaks. They're playing defense first. We're blocking shots. Forwards are blocking shots. Everybody's going down, sacrificing, picking up the, the, in the spare guys in front of the net, and then we're going down on our, you know, and we're and we're putting our chances in the net. All right, I want to go over here to Mark Major. I know he spends a lot of time in front of the goals at both ends. Could you expect this? Well, we had a game plan going into tonight, and uh, our coach uh, just said, you know, pick up the wingers wide and, and stay with them, and. Uh, It'll open up everything for us, and, and right now we're up seven nothing. But uh, we got to look forward to the next two periods, and then look into the overtime because uh, we can't give many opportunities to come back into this game until it's over, and then go into the mini game and do the same thing there. All right, Mark, thanks very much. I'm going to try and walk, walk around Chris Bergeron again. Chris, I talked to you on the bench. All of a sudden, you get on the floor, score a goal. Offense, offense, offense. Confidence. You guys aren't taking a back step. Once you get a chance, you're taking it right to the goal. Well, we knew Minnesota had an offensive team, and we're more known as a more well-rounded team, I think. But we have our offensive guns as well. You know, the Hicks is the Becquerel. You put them up with the best of them. You know, we we've got a we've got a nice lead right now, but uh, nothing safe with these guys. The Hansons, the the Youngs, the Scarters. These guys can put numbers up right quickly, and uh, we don't want to give up uh, an inch. You know, uh, Chris McSorley, our coach, was already you know correcting some things after a seven nothing first half. You don't think there's too much to correct, but you know, there's always things you can get better at, and and we're looking at a three-period game from now on. We we got we've got the third, fourth quarter. And then we're, we're hoping to go to a 12-minute minigame, and then it's just a shootout, and we think we can play with anybody right now. Well, it was all Buffalo in the first half. They're looking forward to that 12-minute minigame. Back up to you, Craig. You are the leading scorer, leading scoring team in the league. Most points. You're shut out for the first half. What in the world could be going on in your locker room? We'll find out. We'll check in with Minnesota when we come back. When you're looking for a truck, you have to make a decision. Should you go for rugged performance or civilized comfort? performance or comfort well when you get a 94 nissan truck with a value truck package including air conditioning am fm cassette stereo chrome package and an available v6 for about twenty three hundred dollars less than a comparably equipped toyota maybe you don't have to make a decision after all it's hot 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 and uncomfortable What's that? An oasis? Nope. Must have been a mirage. <laughs> hey, dry mouth. 
There are some tough jobs. One of them is going in the losing team's locker room, especially at the half where it's 7 nothing. Jim, I know it's a difficult situation down there. Well, we appreciate their input. We're here with Randy Scarta. Randy, uh, I don't think anyone would have expected this. I've been asking Buffalo what's happened. Uh, can you put your finger on it? No, we just we just came out flat. That's all, that, that's all there is to it. We weren't ready to play off, you know, the bell rang, and we came out flat, and they just completely outskated us, outworked us, and just dominated us. I mean... They got three or four shorthanded goals. That, that about says it all right there. It certainly was a dominating first half by Buffalo. We're over here with John Hansen. John, one of your players mentioned on the bench that perhaps the power play can bring you a little too overconfident at times. You think you can score just about every time. When it's shut down, then the trouble starts. What's your input on that? Well, it was a breakdown by all four guys out there on the, on the power play. Each, each time they scored shorthanded, was, you, know, one guy, you know, a guy just beat all four guys. and. You know, went down and scored on you know, a couple breakaways and then one shot. So it's tough right now. We've got to come back and see what happens in the second half here. It's tough on any team, obviously, to be down 7 nothing, But it's a high-scoring game, the high-scoring team in the league. Any chance at all? Are you guys looking forward to that 12-minute period, or are you looking forward to the second half? Well, looking forward to the second half, for sure, to gain some momentum, see what happens. You know, down by 7, it's going to be tough to come all the way back, for sure. But, you know, we definitely have the firepower in here, and we're going to see what happens. Keep working. Well, it's a tough hill to climb. Down by 7 goals after one half, Craig. Back up to you. All right, Jim, tough situation indeed for the Minnesota Arctic Blast here. The highest scoring in the league, team in the league, giving up three shorthanded goals and really embarrassing first half. But 24 minutes to go in the highest scoring play of the RHI. To soothe athlete's foot, Desinex does it. But to cure athlete's foot, Desinex does it. Only Desinex has UDA to both soothe the discomfort and kill the fungus. To soothe and cure, Desinex does it all. ACG means all conditions gear. And all conditions means all conditions. Minnesota during the regular season averaged almost six goals and a half. They're down seven zip at the half. The first time all year they have been held scoreless in a half. In fact, you can't see that about many teams in the RHI. Shots on goal, big edge Buffalo, scoring chances. Hey, look at 14, good chances for Minnesota. Matusi had to make some stops. The faceoffs were even. The power plays, a goal for Buffalo. But the big stat was three shorthanded goals. For the man in the black and purple, who need to win twice tonight. The regular game here and then the 12-minute mini game, which will follow if the Stampede force it with the victory. You notice the wheels for the sport court surface as they adjust, sometimes change at the half to a new set. What a first half, though, for Buffalo. But uh, really, with 24 minutes to go, it is not an overstatement at all to say that uh, this game is certainly not over. Beccarelli with three points in the first half, two short end of goals. Socio, two points. Minnesota 0 for 4 on the power play. 
And the blast shut out for the first time in the first half of this year. But even more than their poor offense, their sloppy defense is the reason they're down by seven. Beccarelli comes in, looks for the hat, quick shot, and Pye makes the stop. There's Reed Larson, the veteran NHLer, and Beccarelli, the one smiling. There won't be many in the white uniform smiling here. Reed Larson, a Minnesota native, Three-time NHL All-Star, a nine-year career with the Red Wings, Boston, Edmonton, the Islanders, Minnesota, and Buffalo. Played over in Italy for a few years, including last year. And a quick whistle with 11.46 to go. Reed, uh, University of Minnesota product. He was a heck of an NHL player, Jim. There's Denny Marouk who has got to be wondering what's going on here. But really, if you think about it, Minnesota had a tough game against Atlanta. And the road in the playoffs has not been quite as smooth as the road in the regular season for the Arctic Blast. And Ringer coming in across the surface. Jim Howe goes for it. Now it's played around by Noel Ron. And he's shuffled out by Socio. Gave it away, Socio stealing, shooting wide. Oh, that would have been a killer. There's an example, Craig, right there. The last man back has to be safe with that first outlet pass. You have to be absolutely sure. Again, Minnesota gives it away. Minnesota is a younger team. Many just past the college age. Buffalo, a lot of experience. Eight players playing in the ECHL, six of them. With Chris McSorley at Toledo last year where they won the Riley Cup for their second straight year. And that helped Chris move on with his success. To the International Hockey League of Coach Las Vegas this year. Jim Howe scores! Jim Howe! Oh, how about that one? Good slap shot. And it looked like Bazzuzzi went right over it. And it's 7-1. The puck was right along the floor. Jim Howe picked the spot perfectly. Howe on the angle. Will shoot the puck to the far side. Now keeps it right on the floor. It actually dings in off the post. So it's the placement of that shot. Looks like an innocent play. Watch the goalie. Batusi, just as he's sliding his feet over, he's slumming, shuffling across. A shooter knows that. You don't necessarily look at the feet, but the shooter senses when the goaltender is ready to shuffle across. And how knew it? At the right time, he pulled the trigger. 10.45 remaining, third quarter. Giveaway again. Cerrone in front, throws it to Bergeron, backhander. Oh, it may have hit the leg of Olim. Olim may have saved the day in front. Leyland lost control. They wave off the offside. Leyland now. That should have been offside. Lays penalty of coming, though, on Buffalo. And Minnesota will work it back and regroup. Here's John Young. Dumps it back to Tim Hannes. Hannes throws it back. Minnesota taking their time. Now it's touched by Cerrone. No whistle yet. Young throws it in front of Leyland scores! Oh, they knew what they were doing. They shut up Leyland in front, seven to two. Two goals in less than a minute. And that's a situation you really don't get to practice that often with a goaltender pulled. But you're right, Craig. Minnesota knew exactly what they were doing. Set it up, take the time. Down off the low post is Leyland. One step, one quick step by Leyland. Very important there. He was not afraid to come to the front. Watch this move. There it is. And it was so quick, it caught the goaltender Vitusi. Vitusi could not move quickly enough. And all it is is the quick footwork. Denny Baruch told his team in the first half to get the feet moving. Leyland did it right there. Got himself a good chance. Second goal for Minnesota. This is the kind of start to the third quarter that Chris McSorley did not want. I mean, if there's anything you don't want to do, is give Minnesota early momentum. And both teams, it's difficult. Is Minnesota looking at this 12-minute mini game? Does Buffalo think they have it? So they're going to look to that third situation where they're going to try and decide the series. Minnesota scores a lot of goals. It's weird to say, but even down seven goals after one half, still they're in the game. Scoring goals for Minnesota is by going to the gas tank and filling up again. And that could be dangerous. Quick shot off the stick of Major. And of course, Buffalo's best attack here would be to, to attack and to keep the pressure on Bill Pye. Net knocked off the line. We get the whistle, 9.16 to go in the third quarter. And Minnesota is making a game out of it and then some. 
early here in the third quarter. Buffalo has the lead, but now it's chopped down to five with 9.16 to go in the third. Forget shouldn't or should have. On your mark. Wouldn't or could have. Get set. Might have but didn't. Can't but should. Someday I may. Love to but haven't. I would if you would. I wish that I did. Truth is, you can if you want to. And, and you will if you do. Third quarter, 9.16 to go, and during the intermission, they were showing the fans a clip from the movie Animal House with John Belushi was rivaling up the gang, and they ran out of the house, and they're hoping the team can do the same thing here. If anybody can, it's this team right here. Quick shot stopped off the stick of Jim Howe again. Now Randy Scarter circling around, looking to regroup. will take it all the way back to his own zone. Floppy pass, though, and it's grabbed by Rob Andringer, one of the few defensive-minded players on the team he scored against buffalo during the regular season but had just a handful of goals for in 21 games something we haven't seen oh good save by the Tusi on the end drinker shot jim howe now behind the net has it in his skate dumps it out and minnesota has indeed picked it up but a two-on-one chance for buffalo beccarelli coming down beccarelli in the backhand Dumps it across the crease. And Buffalo could not get to it. And Randy Scarter dumps it in. Craig, I was saying, something we haven't seen at all, I think, this season. The Buffalo right now, what they're doing is four men. They're not forechecking. They're lining up right across the center line and waiting for Minnesota to come to them. That's the first time this season I think I've seen a defensive shell, a five-goal lead, and Buffalo thinking defense only. Randy Scarter talked about it before the game, how disciplined Buffalo is, and it can almost get to a frustrating level for an offensive club, how they keep the players back. It's just the opposite of Minnesota's high-flying attack. In front of shuffle attempt by Cerrone. Stopped by fire, hangs on. And it really was for the demise of Minnesota in the first half. Their gambling offensive style left a lot of holes. I think if anything in the second half that Minnesota's going to try and do is, is raise the level. Well, maybe this guy wants to get on the floor. <laughs> I don't think he likes what he's seeing. But what Minnesota has to do is try and pick up the confidence. Time to get it, walk right in. Let him haul you down. You had to walk right, walk right in on your forehand. Denny Marook. He was already uh, down. I think he's been yelling. You can tell by the voice they're a little raspy. But Minnesota in the dressing room, if anything, I don't think frustration. Blue line. That's what it was. Come on. I don't think frustration was it, Craig. I think it was more the team was down. Their confidence is shot. Maybe they'll try to build that up before they go into what we expect to be a 12-minute minigame. In an era where athletes are often rewarded before season, that is not the case in the RHI. We'll develop that point in a moment. Jay Moore's shot is stopped. Orvo throws it. Cerrone now will clear it down. And this may go the length for an illegal clear. Kind of slows up. Well, they whistled it very early. And maybe a penalty, actually. Maybe a penalty on the Arctic Glass, I believe. There's Rick Corvo going off. He's holding his chin. I think a power play coming up for Buffalo. The scoring in the playoffs. Victor Jurev, Anaheim leads everyone with 11. Hanson, Beccarelli, Wilcox, and Buchanan with 10 each. Obviously, that is coming in. Excuse me, uh, Beccarelli with two goals tonight to get up to 10. The scores are known on Minnesota, and Hanson did it with four last night. That man had five in game one of this series. Two shorthanded goals already tonight. He gets an assist. He's doing it all. And now Buffalo gets another chance to go on the power play. There's Jay Moore in the penalty box. The captain, I think it was high sticking. Corvo went off with a little bit of a cut. So Buffalo, they've allowed two straight goals. They have a chance here on the power play just to settle things down a little bit. Minnesota lucky, it's only a two minute penalty. That cut could create a five minute major, which creates not only a five minute, but a penalty shot, which is the last thing that Minnesota wants to have happen here against them. Stampede coming in on the power play. So far, 
They are one for one. Quick shot for the point. Score! Beccarelli has got a hat trick. And it did not take long. 28 seconds into that power play. Chances 8-2 Buffalo. Specialty teams all the way for Mr. Beccarelli. Two short-handed, one on the power play. Very simple on this one. He's at the top of the box. And he just lets it go. I think the deception here by Beccarelli, no backswing. Watch this. He doesn't take it back past parallel, so he doesn't waste any time on the release. Look at the release here. Comes back just above parallel. It kind of shoots off his wrong foot there. You saw it. So Bill Pye, the goaltender, he doesn't know that shot's coming. That looked more like the setup for a fake shot pass, but Beccarelli carried through with a shot. His 11th goal in the playoffs to go into the tie for the lead with Victor Gervais of Anaheim in the playoffs. Not too bad, eight to two Buffalo. A little technical here, Jim, when you say the wrong foot, it's the left foot, but sometimes you can still get a pretty good shot off there. That's right, you're shifting your weight, and I think that's what deceives the goaltender. At times, when you're leaning into it, that's what a goaltender expects. That time, Beccarelli was kind of leaning away from the shot, and the surprise fooled the goaltender. Normally, on a shot, you follow through from your back foot to the front foot, and as Jim was talking about, Beccarelli stayed in that back foot. Flashing penalty, another one upcoming against Minnesota. We get the whistle before the shot. And and maybe, maybe a high stick, obviously. Hicks holding his face. And he's looking. Oh, he's cut. So that could be a major penalty, Craig. You just discussed that situation. That has to be major. And we'll see what happens here. The player is automatically out of the game if he gets a major penalty. Hicks still down on the floor. Alex Hicks, the captain of the team, on the surface, getting attended to with 6.09 to go. In the third quarter, Buffalo on the power play, leading by six. Why get only half the workout on an ordinary treadmill when you could get a total body workout? Introducing the incredible new WalkFit from Nordic Track. WalkFit's unique design lets you exercise your upper body and lower body at the same time. You get a fast, effective, total body workout that burns up to 1,000 calories per hour. Whether your goal is to lose weight, tone muscles, or relieve stress, you can do it all with the WalkFit total body treadmill from Nordic Track. WalkFit gives you a 53% greater cardiovascular workout than on ordinary treadmills and you can burn up to 79% more calories. And WalkFit has no motor. It's safe and easy to use. Unlike motorized treadmills, you control the pace. There's no herky-jerky starts and stops. Call our toll-free number now and receive a free information pack video and full-color brochure showing how you can get started on an enjoyable exercise program you'll stick with. Don't settle for half the workout when you can get a superior total body workout with Nordic Tracks WalkFit. Call today and get a 30-day in-home trial and two-year limited warranty. After all, it's from Nordic Track. We're back at the Target Center. Buffalo leading 8-2. to two. Still waiting for the official call from the referees. We'll take a look at it, though. Obviously, Hicks was cut probably by a high stick. Oh, yes. Oh. Number seven. Ooh. John Hansen was getting back on the back check. We'll get a good look at it here. Right across, two-hander. Well, it looked like it hit. Yeah, it's the stick of number seven. He's the right-hander reaching across. And the blade part, the pointy part, went up. Almost glanced off the arms, maybe, on the slash. But it did get high enough. John Hansen, known for his scoring, he's still talking it over with the officials. He's standing near the penalty box area. If it's inadvertent, sometimes they can give a four-minute double minor for high sticking. But, Craig, in that situation, with Hicks being the puck carrier, well, he's going to the box. So that means he's not kicked out of the game. I'd have to they steal and go. They did. Four they, minutes. They gave him that four minutes. But, Craig, usually that's when you're not looking or one guy's falling, the accidental inadvertent. That one was a two-hander. From Once you start from that and you lose control of your stick, I think you've got to give the major. You've got to do it when you're trying to stop another player. Inadvertent, yes, he may not have tried to slash high, yeah. but still, that two-handed slash motion, from that point on, you have to live with your action. Well, he'll live right here with a double minor, and Hicks, he goes right back on the floor. Yeah, it looked like he was kind of reaching in, Jim. I don't know, that's a, that's a tough call there. Usually, when you draw blood, though, you're going to get the, the major penalty because of that. It's an regardless, easy call for me. It's an easy call. Regardless no of the inadvertency or not. There's no doubt that that play was not inadvertent to make contact with the Buffalo player. Once the stick gets high after that point, there's no doubt that should be a major penalty. You're in the playoffs, you're in the semifinals of the league. The officials try to cut back a little bit. They didn't give the major. Hicks is down low for Buffalo. I disagree 100%. No, not a, a little bit with you, though. Hicks is in the corner. And Moore dumps it down. I just thought that he kind of reached in and maybe he split up. But uh, the referees 
They're going to go along with that, give the double minor because of the blood. A break, though, for Minnesota because uh, at worst they'll give up two power play goals. With a major, the guy does not come out of the box. Plus, you get the penalty shot. Plus, the guy could be kicked out of the game. Jay Neal is at the left point. Beccarelli looks for his fourth slap shot wide. Again, off balance. Chris Bergeron, a two-point game. Beccarelli picks one timing blocker save and a nice play by Leland to throw it to the corner. Next down, a rolling puck back to Jay Neal. Check that it's Corvo now has stepped on. Four vote, plaster wide of the net. Craig, if there's one difference here between the power plays, Buffalo is much more urgent on the power play. They want the goals. When Minnesota gets a power play, they're a little tentative. They're not looking to get to the scoring area. But Buffalo is jumping on the loose puck. Jay Moore tries to make the nifty move. Minnesota normally a little crisper on the power play. Tonight they have been kind of nifty. They're passing down his crisp. They're not getting those one-timers across the surface. Hicks scores! Alex Hicks looking by the goaltender. A wrist shot, perhaps screen, and it's 9-2 Buffalo. Alex checks good use of the defenseman there, using the defenseman as a screen. Once again, it's a situation where Hicks leans away and shoots back against the flow. Looks like Minnesota gets caught in a change. Yeah, you can see at the top of the screen. So we'll take a look to see how many Buffalo players up. Just that little lean on the shot by Hicks. Number nine was back, Corey Leyland for Minnesota, but Hicks used him as a screen. He shot between his legs. So the puck is all of a sudden coming out from the feet of the defender. And Hicks puts one by. 4.31 remaining here in the third. Buffalo nine, Minnesota two. There's still two minutes now remaining on the penalty against John Hansen. So Buffalo still on the power play. Hicks will be following Coach Chris McSorley to Las Vegas. He signed a two-year deal with the Thunder of the IHL, a level below the NHL. A big scoring defenseman. He's the all-time leader among these in NCAA Division III, where he led Wisconsin Eau Claire. He won the Riley Cup with Toledo as well. Socio shot. He was raising his stick, but that's becoming a natural instinct now for Buffalo, shooting and then raising their stick. Talk about confidence. And the crowd is out of it now. You can't hear anyone from Minnesota really trying to get their team going. Socio leans into it. He gets the time to really wind up. The transfer of weight was apparent there, but Bill Pye had no traffic in front that time. The goaltender had a chance to see it. He really didn't cover up on the rebound, but the referee lost sight of the puck when he blew the whistle. A lot of people out there, Jim, watching Ooh. tonight play in roller hockey league. Is there a better way to shoot the puck? Yeah, behind the goalie. <laughs> That's where you shoot it. Great, great insight. Thank you. Young coming in. Nice move. Backhander wider than that. Normally, though, you would get with the follow-through a little more of your stick and obviously a faster shot. And I think people talk in roller hockey, they try to pick the puck off the floor a little more. In ice hockey, sometimes you can almost take a divot. The shooters look to shoot behind the puck. I think it changes here on the floor. League sprouting up across the country. It really is amazing. One of the fastest growing sports is roller hockey. Just about anywhere you go now, you see kids with the sticks and the wheels outside. You may do the same in your neck of the woods. Jim Fox normally before the game is outside, trying a new move. Tosio on the corner, backhands it in. 42 seconds to go. That first penalty expires with the goal. We were talking about if they had the five in a major, that would not be the case. LeMay shoots, try to pick a spot. It stops. Minnesota can't clear it, though. LeMay now coming down, man in front, gets it to him. Shot, save in front, rebound, stop again. Another chance for Roney. And it was blocked by the Dean Young. Tackled Cerrone. Young still on Cerrone. Three shots in a row. Buffalo moving the penalty killers around for Minnesota. Minnesota, usually the penalty killers are stationary, tight triangle. They're running all over the place, and Buffalo getting their chances. They kneel toward the net wide. Don't go anywhere. Buffalo does win this game. A 12-minute mini game will decide. Another chance in front. Same rebound. And it knocks along the line, but not in. Harry Olin takes it out. And the Arctic West stayed up. Here's John Hansen coming down, shooting. Delayed penalty, rebound wide. A penalty coming up on Buffalo. Minnesota gets the extra attacker on. And now Buffalo touches up. Alex Hicks will be going off. Two minutes, 11 seconds remaining in what has been a nightmarish evening for Dennis Farouk and company. And it's Farouk's job now to get his team back up. Not necessarily concern himself 
with winning this second half and getting back into the game. He's just got to get the confidence level up. You can tell the confidence of Bill Keep Potter, the goaltender. Ray, keep doing that. Keep taking him. That's it. All right, that's it. Try to stay positive as a coach. I think when he's looking, he's looking towards that 12-minute mini game. Every time Bill Pye makes two or three saves in a row, he drops his head a little bit. He looks a little down, a little frustrated. Some way, Minnesota has to try and get it back going the other way. Even if they don't win this game, they have to look forward to the 12 minutes. Things have not really gone well for Minnesota. That's well stopped by Pye in the playoffs. After winning 14-4 for Atlanta, we did the game. They had to go to a shootout to beat the 500 Ants. I don't mean they're 500 players. They were 500 teams. As Hanson works it around. Then they played Pittsburgh. They lost the opener in Pittsburgh 8-6 against the talented Phantoms team. They came back in game two. They were down 4-2 early. Had a scramble back to win 14-11. And then they won the mini game last Friday night 4-1 over Pittsburgh. So they did what Buffalo wants to do. And that's put two games, put games in quotes, in one night. Minute 25 to go. And then they had the struggle last night again. So the competition obviously has gotten better. But clearly Minnesota has not distanced themselves from the tough competition here in the playoffs. John Beccarelli controlling here on the penalty kill. You can see that now he's a threat. He's a weapon, Beccarelli is. Because as soon as he picks up the puck, even though his team is short-handed, Minnesota goes well, back and thinks defense because they are afraid of what Beccarelli can do. He's already has two short-handed goals. Olin throwing it in front of the backhand. And that's very cute. Wayland on the backhand. Did not beat the goaltender. With 52 seconds to go here in the third quarter of play. Mentioning that Pittsburgh, Minnesota series is big for all, initiated by Brian Trotche. Trotche trying to get Minnesota off their game with a little intimidation. Nick Petusi, very calm and cool in the Buffalo goal. He went down to his knees there. Spotted the play of Leyland, made it look easy. Chris McSorley will not back off an inch. He was in the dressing room at halftime. His team was up by seven. It appeared like they were down a couple of goals. He was rallying the troops. Now they have it back in control again. They still have that seven goal lead. Coaches are keeping our man Jeff in the audio booth tonight with a very quick trigger. A live game and Mike's on both of the coaches. Score! That's got more. Jay Moore, a power play goal. And it's now 9-3 Buffalo. And I've got to think right now, Dennis Maruk, the head coach of Minnesota, is going to be telling his players, hey, did you see that last power play goal? Keep it simple. Shoot the puck. Don't look for everything pretty all the time down for the wraparounds down there close. One simple pass. Olam, Samur, and he's going to fire it. If it doesn't go in, he wants a rebound. He wants a deflection. But one thing to keep in mind, get the shot on goal. Good shot here by Moore. A little bit of a screen, and it goes off the far post. That's the third goal for Minnesota. They need to score more than that. 40.2 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Buffalo leads 9-3. Becoming a favorite spot. It's interesting. Earlier in the game, Dennis Farouk was saying that the, the Blast should shoot high on Matusi. They beat him down low here. A couple of guys with some crafty shots from that left wing. 27 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Greg, it's usually funny listening to coaches talking about where to shoot. There's one simple rule. The goaltender's down, you shoot it up. The goaltender's protecting the high, you shoot it low. Nothing confusing. You just do what the goaltender doesn't give you. You're a goal scorer, though, and you make it sound so easy. You really can't plan it. I think you can plant the seed of a style of a goaltender. But once you get the puck, you got to release it as quick as you can. Now, one thing you can plan, the end of the third quarter. And there it is. And the other thing you can plan on is that Jim Fox will be heading down to the benches for the fourth quarter of play. Well, did the Stampede have enough? Still going to take 12 minutes to send this one to a mini game, but it's looking good after three. Buffalo stampeding over Minnesota by six. Most things in this world aren't big enough to handle seven feet, two inches, 310 pounds. And I ordered the big breakfast. How does that feel? Oh, watch your head, Mr. O'Neill. There is one notable exception. The Big Slam from Pepsi. One ice-cold liter of Pepsi big enough to handle the biggest thirst. Hey, life grand. The first time I switched pain relievers, it was from aspirin to Tylenol. 
Then recently, I switched again from Tylenol acetaminophen to Advil. You see, I got these really pounding headaches, and I found Tylenol didn't always get rid of all the pain. So I tried Advil and found that for my really tough headaches, two Advil worked better than two extra strength Tylenol tablets, better than extra strength Tylenol caplets, better than Tylenol gel caps. For my tough headaches, Advil just works better. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. To prove that armor all is not that X keeps your dad looking clean, we're here at the Desier Dome 500. We've left this side of the dash untreated, while on the other side, we've applied armor all with Dustat X. <laughs> well, there you have it. Armor all with Dustat X keeps your dash looking clean. Now get a free 8 ounce Armor All protectant when you buy a case of Quaker State motor oil. See this offer in local store ads. It's all right to sweat when we're working out, but when we're close, uh uh. Cute or not? If he smells, it's over. Get a little closer with Arid, the anti odor antiperspirant that helps keep you extra, extra dry. I trust Arid. ACG means all conditions gear. And all conditions means all conditions. You look at the Minnesota bench, Randy Scarter looking in. And the Arctic Blast head coach Dennis Marouk. And if Minnesota cannot at least tie it up and send this game to a shootout. We'll have a 12-minute mini game for you live tonight after a short intermission to decide the series and send one of these teams to the final. We talked about some sports rewarding players with contracts before the year. In fact, most sports in this sport, the money is heavily weighted toward the playoffs if you keep winning. The team that wins it all earns about an extra $8,000 Eight to nine thousand in the playoffs. Like one of the Stampede players, John Blessman, I believe, was hurt on that play. Tonight alone, the difference is about two thousand to the team that wins and the team that loses per player. And these are minor league players without Ritzy contracts, and that is a significant change. Buffalo leading after three. Shots on goal, 46 to three quarters for Buffalo. On edge and scoring chances, the faceoffs are even. The power plays, Buffalo with three power play goals. Minnesota, the best power play in the league. One for five tonight, 20%. They were 65% during the regular season. It has not been quite as effective in the playoffs. As you would expect, though, with the better competition. Quick shot, save for Tusi. In front, spin around shot. Hannah save, back in, save again for Tusi. He made three. And Buffalo will dump it down. We may see this a few times in the second half of play. Wheeled around by Olim. Now steered toward the net. Briefly by Hendry for Buffalo. And Minnesota works it out. 11 minutes to go in regulation of game two. David shoots across the surface. Quick shot by Hanson wide of the net. Check going in the corner. By Bergeron for Buffalo. And they come out two on one. The, the May throwing it toward the net. Henry was going toward the net but never got the puck. You wonder from a coaching standpoint, Jim, how difficult it might be now for Buffalo to, from a coaching standpoint, you don't want to lay down at the same time, you don't want to take any silly chances. That's exactly right, Craig. You don't want to lay down and get the momentum away from your team going in to that 12-minute mini game. You want to keep their spirits high. You don't want to take the back steps. Now we see a penalty against Buffalo. So the game certainly is not getting away from them by any means. Looks like just a penalty away from the play. Minnesota trying to get the play going offensively. And, well, just taken down. Knocked off the puck. Looked like pretty good defensive position. But Minnesota goes on the power play. Jason Cerrone goes to the box for two minutes. Minnesota one for five on the power play, and again have given up three shorthanded goals. One in the first quarter, and two quick ones, both by Vecarelli in the second quarter. Buffalo went up seven to nothing. 
at the half. Minnesota outscored Buffalo 3-2 in the third. Jim, I would think, if nothing else, and again, they're not out of the game by any means yet, but they want to get their offense clicking on the power play here. That's right. Try the simple plays. Go to the set plays. Just execute. Oh, and quick one-timer hit the post. They had him beat that time. That was classic Minnesota hockey right there on the power play as Moore was set up for the one-timer that the goaltender had no chance at. But Juicy stops young that time. Greg, those shots from the angles may not be going in, but you use those shots to open things up. Something down low will open up if you keep shooting from the top. Yes, and you can also set up the guy up top if you have to watch the guys in the wing. Going toward the net. Wraparound attempt by Leland was wide. Now Moore takes it across surface. One timer hit the side of the net. John Young. There's Young again. Blocked. Moore could not see it up. Olim got stopped by Batusi with 9.25 to go here in the fourth quarter. 57 seconds on the penalty. One thing Buffalo does not want to see in this game or if they get to the minigame would be a shootout where they are 2-5 and five now this year. Good luck at Chris McSorley. He brother of uh, Los Angeles King Marty McSorley. GM coach, also a part owner of Buffalo, one of 10 kids. And he moved over from Anaheim to take the ownership coaching role here in Buffalo after leading the Bullfrogs to the title last year. Would it be interesting if his team could move on and he would take on Anaheim for the championship? Yeah. gotten a stick in the hands and shot and it's now 9-4 with plenty of time to go 9-0-3 remaining doesn't appear like minnesota is really setting up camp in front but there's timing as the shot is going to come through that's when the setup goes there's hansen through there's the other setup so now they have two men low it looks like it's deflected off of the buffalo defender trying to block the shot now ah, there it is right off the left leg of Dave shoot number 20. It goes off the left leg, watch the goaltender, he flinches one way, just sneaks in the short side on the deflection. Minnesota on the board with another power play goal. Oh, great look at it there. He was going to his left, as you said, Jim, and the puck skittered by to the right off the defenseless leg. So Hansen will get the goal. He now has 11 in the playoffs. We get a whistle and another power play opportunity coming up here. It's gonna be a slashing penalty and it will be on Minnesota. So the Arctic Blast pull within five, but now they'll have to defend a Buffalo power play when we come back to the target center. Didn't make it to the big dance last year. I need to hit something. I need a little foot action, a little foot action, a little foot action. Jerry. Jerry. Reggie? You really should find a healthier way to deal with your anxiety. Air Mission and Air Alpha by Nike. Get them at over 400 foot action stores nationwide. Add the sand. And the salt water. And the gals. And the guys. The firmer the better, right, Tammy? Put in sunblock. Eye block. Add some fresh feet. And pulverize. Bake it till it burns. Beach volleyball served up on ESPN2. Dig in. We're again with Chris McSorley down on the Buffalo bench. Chris, any special strategy here? You're coming down to the end of the game, five goal lead? Well, it's nice to have a five goal cushion against the team as strong as Minnesota, but we're going to need every goal we have right now. Our guys are getting a little winded right now, and support right now for capitalizing this power play. We get this power play goal, and I think you're going to see Minnesota maybe pack it up away from the minigame. Well, yeah, unusual, unique situation. There is that 12-minute minigame coming. Does that change how you look upon the game as a coach? I think Dr. Kevorky, and uh, he, he must have a position here with RHI because it's, uh, <laughs> it's definitely it's, uh, something that's not for the faint of heart, and I'm not real excited all about it, but uh, then again, we're the team that lost the first game. We have to look forward to trying to get through this game and look forward to the second game. Well, it's a mental thing. You have to look forward, but you can't look too far ahead. Buffalo, no doubt, though, they're in control throughout this entire game. 
the confidence level of Minnesota is way down, and Buffalo feels real good. Jim, if nothing else, and again, we keep reiterating with eight minutes to go, there's still plenty of time. They're only down by five, highest scoring team in the league. But you would think that if they can get something going, even get two or three back, and head into that mini game, Minnesota picking up with some momentum, that could help them out in that final 12 minutes to decide the series if Buffalo can win this one. Craig, what that does is allow them to something positive to talk about in the intermission before the 12 minute minigame. They can go back in there, we'll be in the dress rooms, we'll talk to them, we'll see if they can get something positive here, it's something they can talk about that is not negative. And I think that would be important going into that minigame. Beccarelli throws it over to Neal, back to Beccarelli, score! What a setup by Beccarelli and Jay Neal. And John Beccarelli, who had five goals in game one, has four goals in game two. Whoa! Shoots the puck when it's going in. And Beccarelli, he's been eager and hungry for the puck all night, chasing it down. This is what Buffalo likes to do. It's a box, and there's the shooter. Again, there's no real backswing by Beccarelli. He doesn't waste any motion on the backswing. He gets everything going forward, and he really slaps it. He uses a very long stick. When you have that long stick, you have a big arc, and that means a harder shot. He showed it to us there. Tenth goal on the night for Buffalo. Long hair and long stick for John Beccarelli, who turned 30 years old on July the 4th out of Toronto, Ontario. Chris McSorley, in fact, used to check Beccarelli in the IHL. Shot scored in the way! Rob Andringa coming in for Minnesota, and the Arctic Blast are back with his five. Now, there's something they can talk about. Andringa not known for jumping in on the offense. He usually stays at home. But when the opportunity presents itself, join the offense. And this time, he's way out in front of the play. So he keeps going. It's a smart play. And he just uses his smarts. The quick release here, I think, is important, too. Goaltender Batusi tries to slide across, but it's a quicker release. Another look at it on a two-on-one. When Batusi decides to go for that two-pad slide, he was well out of his net, but a good pinpoint shot by the defenseman. 10-5, Buffalo. And Bringa scored the tying goal in the regular season against Buffalo to send the game to overtime, which Minnesota won in that shootout. 5-4, Minnesota, in case you're just joining us, won game one last night in Buffalo at the Auditorium. 8-7 in a shootout. So Buffalo has to win this regulation game and then the 12-minute mini game, which will follow. In front of the net, some pushing and shoving. Jim Howe, a delayed penalty of coming on Buffalo. Now was looking for a penalty. Socia cannot believe that it's going to be on him. Socia took a couple of shots to the chin, but I think he was the man who instigated the situation. Buffalo is known for being so strong in front of their own goal. That's where Socia was. And both players were exchanging grins after the play. But during the play, there was a couple of punches thrown. Socio is the only man to go to the box. Again, Minnesota's just looking for little things to get him going. They have another power play. He deserved it. Seven minutes, 21 seconds, regulation. And Minnesota, two for six in the power play tonight, will get their seventh chance. Certainly the most dangerous weapon so far has been Beccarelli, power player shorthanded. Beccarelli has two power play goals and two shorthanded goals. The way to stop Beccarelli is to keep him an even stretch. He's been tough in the uh, Central League team's department, hasn't he? Minnesota comes in, 145 to go in the penalty. Scotter trying to set it up. Number 14 is Tim Hannes. He's had some outstanding efforts in shootouts. He's won both of the shootouts with decisive goals in the playoffs. They beat Atlanta in the first round in the shootout. And then last night at Buffalo, and it's had the decisive shootout goal. Randy Scarta. Through Hanson's leg. 6.37 to go. Players are on the sports court surface. 26,000 plastic tiles. Hanson shooting it, and it's close, close stop there by Nick Patusi. And he hangs on. Nick for the best goals against average. And the playoff is 6.21 coming in. Game rewind, Beccarelli with five points. Buffalo, great in the specialty teams. 
seven total goals there. Minnesota, just 33% of the power play tonight. And again, if the Stampede win, that'll force a 12-minute mini game, which, by the way, if it's tied at the end of 12 minutes, we'll have a shootout to decide the Eastern Conference winner and see which team moves on to play Anaheim and Portland, the winner of that Western Series. Here's Olin at the point, 54 seconds in the penalty to Buffalo. Olin steered in front, Leyland shot, stopped, and dumped down by John Blessman. Craig, on this penalty kill, Buffalo is electing not to take Corey Leyland in front. They're allowing him to stand in front. That last little pass got through, but he's down a little too close, not much room to work. Olin hacked from, from behind by Beccarelli. It's the skate of LeMay, 5.50 in regulation. One-timer, Young, what a blast! It almost knocked Patusi into the net, but he hangs on. John Young, the leading scorer in the regular season with 79 points in the RHI. He won that scoring title with a six-point effort in the final game against New England. We'll get a chance to see Young kind of skating back, and then he stops, plants, and fires. And it did knock over Patusi. The goaltender getting back squared to the shooter, that's very important. We haven't talked much about this guy, especially in the first half, because his team was busy scoring goals. But he's been very solid in the goal. Plays the shooter very well. As we saw in that last play, very comfortable. Jim, no goal for Young, but does he feel a little bit better that he knocked the goaltender over as a, as a kind of a macho shooter? I think anything that goes positive <laughs> for Minnesota right now, they're going to take, and he may look at it like that. He couldn't knock the puck in, but we almost knocked the goalie over the line. 5.30 to go. Larson with a quick shot. Patusi, by the way, started as a forward in his hockey career. Skin. Got to the spot of that. Backhanded by Ron. Then we get the whistle as one of the Buffalo players was knocked down. That's Jay Neal. Jay Neal was knocked, possibly hit up in the face again by an errant stick. For the puck. Well, the CFL returns for more excitement on ESPN2 Friday at 7.30 when the Ottawa Rough Riders take on the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. No, it's not an inter-squad game. It's CFL offensive action at its best. Don't look away because you'll miss something for sure. The Canadian Football League only on the news. Of course, Ottawa Rough Riders, that's two words, and Saskatchewan is only one word. Great. 5.18 remaining. In regulation, Buffalo leads 10 5. Craig, you see Jay Neal, he's going off right now. I'm down on the bench here with Larry Olam. Larry, tell me the situation. You've been behind all game. Are you looking forward to that 12 minute mini game, and can you change things to make it go your way? Well, I sure think so. It was a really disappointing start, but we got to forget about that. And we came to play in the second half and try to win the game. And if we don't win the game, let's try to get momentum built up for the last 12 minutes. And no matter what the score is, after this game, we've got 12 more minutes. So we're going to, you know, we still feel confident in 12 minutes, anything can happen. I mentioned in the first intermission, excuse me, at halftime, the situation was your team didn't seem frustrated, but it sure did seem down. Is that what you're talking about? Getting the momentum going back so you can get it on an up? Exactly. You know, it, I think the guys know that it wasn't over, so we're not real frustrated, but we're really disappointed in ourselves. And, there's not, no excuses at all. We just didn't come ready to play, and we got to get ready for that. You know, if we can't come back here, we got to get ready for those 12 minutes. Hey, good luck. Minnesota with a big advantage in the fourth quarter with shots on goal, but you kind of expect that with Buffalo playing a little bit of a defensive style here. Giving up some exterior shots, still not allowing, if they can, the real good scoring chances. Buffalo led 7 0 at the half. They went out to an explosive start. Really a sloppy Minnesota effort as well. Three shorthanded goals for Buffalo. And it was a combination of Buffalo playing well and Minnesota playing horrible. Hicks coming in. He's got a couple. Shoots. That one goes in and caught the corner. And Hicks for Buffalo has got the hat trick himself. His sixth goal of the playoffs. And it's now 11 to 5. Hick shooting against the flow. Get the goaltender moving one way, then shoot the other. And if anyone does seem down, I think, for Minnesota, it may be the all-star goaltender, Bill Pye. He's not used to this many goals. But look at him shuffle. The goaltender cannot move on rollers as well as he can shuffle on ice. But it's a perfect example. Again, the shooter kind of senses. Nice, quick release. It didn't look like at all that Hicks would have a chance to get a shot off. The puck was way out in front of him. It was in the feet of the defenseman. 
but he just propelled it towards the goaltender. And Billy Pye was moving across. Moving. Buffalo 11, Minnesota 12, 5. Four minutes, 23 seconds to go. Jim, I'm just wondering if at some point here, Minnesota's going to think about trying to save their legs for the minigame. Ray Barson skating out. Up to Jim Howe coming in. Good wrist shot. Oh, effective shot. And we're stopped by Batusi. And he hangs on with four minutes and nine seconds remaining in regulation. And Buffalo with a six-goal advantage. And looking toward the minigame. If they can hang on over the next 4.09. We're back to the target center in a moment. Buffalo, the story in game two. As the amount you spend with your Discover card goes up, your interest rate goes down, down, down. With the Smart Rate Program. And only Discover card has it. So use the Discover card. Where the percentages are always in your favor. To apply, call 1-800-DISCOVER. It pays to discover. I'm here with Dennis Maruk, head coach of the Minnesota Arctic Blast. Dennis, obviously a tough night, but it's kind of like a savior, that 12-minute game that's coming up. Anything that a coach can do to pick his team back up, just turn it around 180 degrees? Well, they got to be positive and stay together. You know, we've had a pretty good season so far, so, you know, why end it right now? So they're, they're good players. They just got to stay positive and work together. I know a couple of games back we were talking to you, especially on the power play. Keep it simple. Don't try to be fancy. It appeared to me that when you have been simple tonight on the power play, just the shots on goal, that's when they're going in. Yeah, that's right. They're going in, but they're blocking a lot of shots, too. So they're, they're doing a good job defensively blocking the shots to kill opponents. But, you know, you never know. Anything happens. Any new challenge for a coach going into that 12-minute mini game? You really don't see it in any other sport. Something you can prepare for or not? No, I, no it's not that you can prepare for. It's basically, you know, what you, the players have played together most of the year. So they just got to say it's either... We win, we lose, someone's got to win. All right, back up to you, Craig. All right, Jim, 11-5 Buffalo. We have a delay on the uh, surface as they attend to the uh, glass, I believe it is right there, you're looking at. That gentleman has that tough job of holding up one of the stanchions. Jim, I wonder if you can get the feeling from one of the players on the, uh, the financial aspect of this series as you see david mclean from the league office adding his uh, two cents there but the money difference is at least two thousand dollars to the winner of this team it's four thousand to two thousand what kind of factor is that for the players jim down here with alex hicks alex an outstanding game by the entire team but obviously yourself i think with three goals what do you think the difference has been so far tonight well, I, I think we just came out and played uh, really good defensively. Uh, that might sound kind of stupid since we, we scored 11 goals, but uh, we just capitalized on all their mistakes. And uh, we knew they were going to try to score a lot of goals. We, we knew if we just sat back, we are going to get our chances. And uh, luckily, the puck was going in. Obviously, the uh, big lip you got going right there, a little cut under the nose. High stick. It looked like, to me, perhaps a major penalty. He took a pretty good two-hander. Uh, what's your input? You're the guy who uh, took that slash. Well, I, I told the guy in the penalty box when I took a penalty after that, I said, if I would have done something like that, I would have got life. But, uh, you know, it's just the way it goes. I thought it should have been five. Uh, you know, the guy deliberately slashed right in the face. But uh, you got to suck it up a little bit. And uh, we were fortunate uh, to, to score two power play goals on that. And uh, I'll take the two power play goals. Everyone talks about discipline, especially in the playoffs. When it comes to taking those types of penalties, your team is known. You led the league in penalty minutes. How difficult is it come playoff time to all of a sudden say, hey, we can't retaliate. Keep your mind on the game. Well, that's, uh, that's probably the easiest part, doing that, because we all know that, uh, you know, we're old enough to realize that we've got to suck it up a little bit. But uh, I, I think the hardest part is battling the refs, because they're used to calling us penalties all, all year. And, uh, you know, some of the other teams in the league that take a lot of penalties are probably going through the same thing right now, because uh, they're used to you taking 10, 11, 12 minors, and, and they're going to call them on you. And, and as you've seen tonight, we've been shorthanded the whole game. All right, let's get back at her. All right, just about ready to go with four minutes and nine seconds. 
remaining here in the fourth quarter. Both teams may want to just get to that uh, extra session. Looks like we have an extra off-ice official tonight with an unusual job of helping hold one of the stanchions in place. Uh, some of the physical checks we have seen here tonight. Reed Larson goes after it, plays it in the corner. Shuffled aside by Noel Ron, number 12 for Minnesota. Cross surface, Corvo delays around Larson, hooked by Larson, bothered. Shot cleared aside by Pye, was knocked down. The goaltender hit hard. By Chris Bergeron out of Buffalo. Three and a half to go. Larson checked aside. Now in front shot. Score! No run. And Minnesota within five. With 323 to go. Well, the second time tonight that Minnesota has taken advantage of the goaltender pulled on a delayed penalty, and they really do take their time. They get used to that extra man, just trying to control along the boards. Then the puck goes right to the middle. Good quick release. Noel Ron there, he just reached back and flicked the wrist. I don't know if there was a screen there or not. A lot of Minnesota players around the net if there's a rebound. So you take advantage of that extra man, you take all the time the other team gives you. And that's the sixth goal for Minnesota tonight. Once again, maybe one of the positive things they can talk about between the intermission when they're looking forward to that 12-minute minigame. Well, 3.23 to go. I'll tell you, if they get a quick, if they get a quick goal here, they might still be thinking about this one. They need a quick one, and they'll have some three minutes to operate. Now by four, 11-6 Buffalo, 3.10 to go. Randy Scarter plays it. Randy holds the Gopher record, most goals by a defenseman at the University of Minnesota at 19 in a short college year. Game more shot is stopped. Up in the air board, thrown out. Breakaway chance, Sosia has got Beccarelli ahead of him, going for number five. Beccarelli on the wrong foot, saved by five. Socio there for the rebound, and Young comes back to play it. Two minutes, 40 seconds remaining in regulation. Corey Leyland, number nine. Corey coming in. Got blocked by the defense. That is Farouk. Talked about the Buffalo D getting in the way of shots. Oh, you saw it again right there. This one looks like it's headed to a minigame. 12 minutes to decide the season for these two teams. One will move on to the finals. And one will pack it in and look to the ice hockey season. Leyland comes in. The starter works it in front. He knocks the net over. And we get the whistle with 2.07 to go. Nick Matucci. Wanted to play goaltender all along. Started out as a forward. His dad said, play a year forward, improve your skating, and then you can go play goal. At the age of seven, he played goal, and he said he wanted to quit after the first day of practice because the equipment was too heavy. But eventually, he got used to it. And uh, as a fascination with goaltender Matt, he used to love the wild mask of former New York Ranger goalie, Gilles Graton. Who had a lion design and was one of the first goaltenders to really get the mask into some kind of wacky design. It was a ferocious lion kind of coming out and biting you, which had no relation to the uh, a mascot or anything of the Rangers. Jumped down the minute 40 to go in a legal clear, and Matusi said that was one of his attractions to playing goal. Hey, Jim, I was talking about the financial aspects and the players have been talking about it. There's a significant amount of money on the line here. Maybe you can get a response from one of the players on that. Well, I'm sure they're interested in that. Obviously, you want to win as an athlete. Pride is always the main determining factor. But you're right, Craig. They play a very short season compared to the regular ice hockey season. But the money does add up here in the playoffs. Well, not only that, though, it's weighted in this situation in the RHI. It's weighted heavily toward the playoffs. And the players know that. And uh, success in the playoffs, the difference here tonight is uh, over $2,000 between the winning and losing team. Buffalo trying to clear it. Kept it again. Only in front. Can't get to it. The minute and 15 to go. Now shoot at the point. 
lost control. He whacks it back into his own zone. And this one is headed to a minigame. We'll go to the locker rooms at the intermission. And listen in. No Ron skating up. What Minnesota has to realize here is the slate is completely wiped clean in 50 seconds. And uh, psychologically, although they've been beaten here in game two, they've got to realize they are even up when the 12-minute minigame starts. Jim Howe flips it out. No run in his own zone. And of St. Cloud State works as a sports agent for Brian Lawton's office, former NHLer here in Minneapolis. In the left wing corner, Jim Howe throws the body. Jim playing in his second year of roller hockey, played in the World Roller Hockey League last year, and that league merged with the RHI this year as the league expanded from 12 to 24 teams around the country and up into Canada. Bergeron coming in, Bergeron through the crease, and that'll do it. So, task number one is accomplished by the Buffalo Stampede as they win game number two by an 11 to six final in game two. And Dennis Farouk will head off and get his team thinking confidently as you look at the Stampede going into the dressing room. And right now, they really have not done anything yet either because if they don't win the 12-minute minigame, their season is over. But at least they have forced the decisive 12 minutes. And now they have a chance to go on to the championship series against the winner of Anaheim or Portland. Alex Hicks talking to the referees obviously uh, complaining about some kind of penalty or problem he has with the other team very rare to see the captain compliment the referee saying nice job good call in this kind of a, a situation X had an outstanding first game he scored three goals his biggest thrill was winning the Riley Cup he won two of them back-to-back -back championships for Chris McSorley at Toledo one of them in double overtime. So the referees and the players head off. Everybody's a celeb here at the Target Center, but right now Buffalo is 12 minutes away from moving on. We'll be back in a moment. Hey, roller hockey is the hottest sport in America, and only one magazine goes end-to-end -end with all the action. Roller Hockey Magazine. Subscribe now for the most up-to-date, in-depth roller hockey coverage available. The hottest products, surefire tips to improve your game, the latest news and events, hockey humor, an inside look at the RHI pros, and more. Plus, you get an extra issue absolutely free. That's seven for the price of six. To subscribe, call toll-free 1-800-5-ROLLER. That's 1-800-5-ROLLER. Call now. Want to learn how to stick handle? Skate, pass, shoot, pick out gear and avoid penalties? Yeah. You gotta pick up the phone and get sticks and stones. What's that? Sticks and stones. The video. It's the hottest new inline roller hockey instructional video on the planet. No way. Way. Call 1 800 Roller 4. And call now. It's only $19.95 and we pay the shipping. Call 1 800 Roller 4. Commune where land and water meet. Dig the sand, love the sun. Make waves, not war. Wavestock 94, the ESPN2 Labor Day weekend beach sports extravaganza. A universal celebration of beach behavior. Sunday at 8 p.m. Turn on, tune in, kick sand. I'm Jim Rome, coming up on Talk 2 tonight, live from Los Angeles. We'll talk some boxing. Meldrick Taylor is getting ready for his showdown with Julio Cesar Chavez. And we'll get an update on the Deion Sanders sweepstakes. 49er President Carmen Policy coming up live on the program. Stay tuned. Overtime coming up next for Roller Hockey, then Talk 2, live from Los Angeles, right here on The Deuce. Buffalo wins game two, 11 to six. Don't go anywhere. The mini game is upcoming in just a few minutes right here on the news. Right now, the teams are in the 
respective locker rooms talking it over. We'll see what the Stampede have to say. Jim Fox is in the Buffalo locker room. In the middle. To the defenseman. Make sure wingers go in with a swing pattern. Avoid contact in the offensive zone. We go in the offensive zone. We chase the opponent down for some contact. I guarantee you. If they roll off, it's going to be a four on three. If you bet Minnesota with their offensive guns, they're going to activate all four guys. Just go up there, penetrate, pick up the weak side, leave the middle of the ice to the defenseman. We do that, guys, we're going to have ourselves a successful quarter. We've got a lot of money in line. Let's go. Chris, I think you bring up a very good point there. It's one of those gray areas. You're a team that has to hit, but at the same time, if Minnesota does roll off, they're going to come at you full speed. Well, this is a team that if we go in the offensive zone and try to force this team, they're going to, you, you're going to bet you, you're going to see four, uh, four blast jerseys chasing towards our net. We got to go in there just like the start of the game. We went and picked up the weak sides, really slowed the game down, made it somewhat of an exciting sport, a very boring sport, <laughs> but uh, 11 goals, you can't, uh, you can't, you know, you can't deny it at this point. Winning the game, uh, now looking back as easily as you did, does that change the preparation here going into this mini game? Well, it's funny, but I don't see any guys loosening the skates, but it's all a brand new ball game right now. And Minnesota threw some penalties on our behalf. Uh, they gained a lot of momentum there at the end of the game, and you can bet this team's going to come out. They're going to play strict man-on-man, -man, a lot of forced action right at the start of the period. And they're going to try to get on that board first. All right, thanks, Chris. I'm going to go around again and try and get some words here from some of the uh, from the players here in the Stampede. John Hendry, John, uh, one of the few, well, it's a unique situation. Uh, 12 minutes, that's all you have remaining in this season. What are you thinking about right now? It's kind of like one of those dumb question situations. Obviously, you're thinking about the game, but what goes through your mind at this point? Well, we're just going to try to come out and play this 12 minutes like we played the first 12 minutes of the game. Coach McSorley devised the plan, and it's working very well, so hopefully things will work out for us. When you talk about teams coached by Chris McSorley, everyone comes up with the same type of word to describe it, and that's team unity. Everyone says, hey, it's such a close team. What brings a team so close together? Well, I think what brings the team close together is the final result is winning. Everybody in this room wants to win. Everybody's come from a team and the winner that's won. So we're just bringing that all together tonight, and hopefully we'll, we'll pull it off here. All right, we're going to move down the line here to Jason Cerrone. Uh, Jason, it's been, a, like I mentioned to your coach, kind of a, a game where you won easily. How do you prepare for this one now? We just start where we started in the first period. You know, it's back to basics, back to what we wanted to do in the first, and that's taking away their shooting lanes and slowing, oh, taking away their speed by hitting and slowing them down. Chris and McSorley, the head coach, mentioned that, that gray area, and I talked to him just about it, but I want to ask you from a player's point of view, okay, you're an aggressive team, you have to take the body. At the same time, if you miss, you're out of the play. How do you gauge your speed when you get in there on the forecheck? <laughs> good question. Good, yeah. <laughs> you just, I mean, you just take a good angle at a guy and hope that uh, he keeps coming your way, I guess. With a team with such speed, all you got to do is pick them up before they get the puck. You pick them up deep in their end so they don't get their speed to go around you. Everyone talked about intimidation. You guys are the tough guys. They maybe can be intimidated. Do you think it had anything to do with winning that game so easily? No, I don't think intimidation is a factor in the playoffs. I mean, everybody should be mentally tough, and if they can't be me mentally tough for the playoffs, they shouldn't have made it here. All right, we're going to move down the line again. We have another uh, gentleman here, Jay Neal. Saw Jay at the All-Star game. He's got his Notre Dame hat on. You trying to get some luck of the Irish going here? I hope so this half, yeah. A little uh, lucky hat? Yeah, it could be. Just wear it at home a bit, and we've been lucky there, so I uh, hope it carries over into this last game. Always talking about the lanes in the middle of the ice, preventing the team from coming in there. As the big team, you have to get inside position. You guys did that very well. Can you carry that over now? Do you think it, is there an advantage to any team here when you know you only have 12 minutes to play? Is it the offensive team or is it the guys that grind it out? Uh, I don't know. I think you have to go out and play your game plan. And I think we did that to perfection. We've done it best all year. Uh, first half, we were patient. We waited for our opportunities. We're playing a run and gun team. And, uh, we don't want to go up and down with the ice with them. We want to wait for our chances, hold up, keep the goals off the board. Uh, Nicky's going to do that for us, and then we'll get our chances. Well, this is a situation we saw you earlier in the season. Obviously, this team plays with a lot of heart, but obviously execution is also a very big part of it. Chris McSorley now addressing the team, trying to get them ready. There's only two minutes to go. Chris Bergeron again. Any last thoughts before you go back out there for 12 minutes? No, we're just going to have to go with the same uh, same attitude we had right at right the half of the, of the original game and, uh, and come out all guns are blazing with defense in mind. Well, they, you guys play it hard. The execution was exceptional tonight. Is that just a, ma a mindset, kind of a focus that you guys came into this second game with? I think so. I think we're all grown men. We all know our jobs, and our job is to stay man on man and uh, on the floor. And uh, that's what it came down to. And for the most part, we did a pretty good job. And we got 12 minutes to go and prove it again. There's no doubt about it. Once that puck made it into the zone of Buffalo, man on man was very tight. Back up to you, Craig. All right, thank you very much, Jim. As you look at the stampede getting all set to hit the surface again, We'll come back with the start of the mini game. 12 minutes to decide the winner of the Eastern Conference of the OHI.
When you're looking for a truck, you have to make a decision. Should you go for rugged performance? Or civilized comfort? Performance? Or comfort? Well, when you get a 94 Nissan truck with a value truck package, including air conditioning, AM, FM, cassette, stereo, chrome package, and an available V6 for about $2,300 less than a comparably equipped Toyota, maybe you don't have to make a decision after all. Buffalo Stampede winning the first game. Game two, actually. Tonight, 11 to 6. Minnesota won game one in Buffalo and a shootout last night. So now it's down to this, a 12-minute minigame to decide it all. Stats in game two. Well, everything weighted to the left. Score, shots on goal. The scoring chances were even. And the power plays, four to five for Buffalo, two for seven for Minnesota. The power plays will be so crucial here in the minigame. Here's the Eastern Conference matchup. Buffalo Stampede beating Montreal in the semis. Minnesota beating Pittsburgh in the semis. Buffalo defeated New Jersey in the early round. Minnesota beat Atlanta in the early round. Western Conference. Anaheim defeated San Jose, then Los Angeles to get to the finals. Portland Rage upsetting Vancouver and then taking on Calgary and beating them to get to the finals. And here comes Minnesota. And Chris McSorley mentioned the financial end of this. The winning team in the playoffs will earn $8,000 a man, extra. The second place team, $4,000 a man, and the loser here tonight will earn $2,000 a man. And we mention this because it is not just tack on money. It is uh, it's something the players, of course, have talked about their entire season. The way the money was scheduled for the players was based heavily toward the playoffs where they can make a lot if they keep winning. And it uh, does pro provide an excellent incentive They will have a good season and move on to the playoffs. So, Denny Maroof taking some notes. Nick Batusi, the goaltender, to our right. Phil Pye, the goaltender, to our left. Both out of the ECHL. Billy Pye, all-star representative of fifth round pick of Buffalo. And the crowd realizes it's a new game, a new score, 12 minutes to decide the Eastern Conference winner. And game two is history right now, especially in the minds of Minnesota, but Buffalo too. It does not mean anything. It's down to this. It should be interesting. Let's see if Minnesota can forget about game number two. Olin quick shot stopped by Caduce. Zeccarelli tries to get it out of Henley behind the play. And with 11.43 to go, a slashing penalty upcoming on, I believe it's on Minnesota. Nope. Going to be on Buffalo. John Blessman heading off. And Minnesota goes on the power play. They were two for seven in the power play in game two. Here's John Blessman in the box. You look at Beccarelli, who had three shorthanded goals. And that is an RHI record for one game. Larry Olin will be at the point. Corey Leyland on the right wing. Jay Moore on the left wing for John Young from Minnesota. Beccarelli out there with Jay Neal. And the captain, Alex Hip for Chris McSorley and Buffalo. Minnesota gets the draw, it's Olim. They had the most potent power play by far in the regular season, 65%. In front, chipped out. Beccarelli may get a chance for his fourth short-handed goal of the evening. He comes in, he has Hicks over there. The pass shuffled across the surface, and Hicks never got to it. It was a rolling puck, and Beccarelli had a tough time getting it down. Jay Moore will skate out. A minute 30 in the penalty, 11-13. In the mini game, Young coming in. Young looks for the shot, and he hit the side of the net. The fans were jumping. They had just missed. Minute 20 of the penalty. There's Young again. Back to Olim. They're trying to work it across to Jay Moore. Blocked in front by Neal. Beccarelli will work it out, and again turns into offensive chance. 
around Olin with a backhand shot stopped by Pye. Neal there for the rebound. And Bill Pye finally stops John Beccarelli on a shorthanded chance. John Beccarelli, what a season. He had 32 goals in the regular season. And he goes for his fourth shorthander of the night and his fifth goal. And Pye came out and made the stop. You watch Olin, though, as he shuffled Beccarelli to the outside just a bit. And may have gotten a stick as well in the shot. Look at Beccarelli. Running in a little bit earlier, trying to set up Alex Hicks. He had him in front. But it was a nice defensive play, and it went high over the stick of Alex Hicks. One minute and two seconds on the power play here from Minnesota. 10-40 in regulation of this mini game. It's game three now. Florida throws it in front. Anis goes after it, throws it out. Beccarelli with field. And John sets up Alex Hicks. Hicks had a hat trick in game two, shooting wider than that. If you're tuning in after tuning out for a while, this is the mini game now. Buffalo won game two tonight. Here live on the deuce, 11-6, to force this decisive 12-minute game. If Minnesota won game two, we would not be here. Shot stopped by Latusi. Ten minutes to go. Sparta fakes the shot. Tried to set it up. Beccarelli will get another chance for his fourth short-handed goal. Beccarelli coming in. Shoot, scores! John Beccarelli may have set a record that will not be touched. Four short-handed goals in one evening with 11 seconds on this penalty. Buffalo again scores, killing it off. It's almost that presence of Vaccarelli. You saw him take away the passing lane. Now watch him set up. Patience, and then he goes tweeners against Bill Pye. He set up perfect positioning by Vaccarelli. He gets the puck out to his side. That means he can shoot or geek. He decides to shoot, and he just places a perfect shot. There's not much room between the pads of a goaltender. And you can tell the true confidence of a goal scorer. Most players don't even shoot there. Beccarelli, 13 goals, six on the power play, four short-handed. Even straight, hey, take those away, and he still has a great playoff so far. He has controlled that situation. Minnesota back on their heels. Well, Minnesota still with six seconds in the power play. They try to even it up again. The last man, very sloppy. And Nemeth skates out. Nemeth gets around Jay Moore. Still has it pulled down. And no penalty. Oh, my. Buffalo bench is standing up. They cannot believe there was not a penalty call. We're even strength. Four on four. 9.30 to go. Leyland coming in. In front. The blanket by Young. And Matusi made the save. Then Young is knocked down. And the refs will not call that one either. As a maker, perhaps. As uh, Nemeth knocked Young down. Nice little cool, calm save there by Matusi. It's almost the way he made the save that's even more important than stopping the puck, showing all kinds of control. But before that, Tom Nemeth has a chance, killing a penalty on a breakaway, just tries to hold off the checker. And you see there, Nemeth never really had a chance to get set for the shot. He had to get it back. In roller hockey, you can't play without a helmet. He even took time to pick up the helmet, get it back on, and get back to help out defensively. Beccarelli with five goals here on the evening, four in game two, now one of the mini games. And he has three, here's a bizarre stat, three unassisted saved by Patusi. How about that? Three goals unassisted in the same evening. Hendry trying to work it out. Al steals it. 9.13 to go in regulation of the minigame. The winner here will move on to play in the Western, against the Western winner in the RHI Championship here in 1994. We'll have it for you coming up Friday Evening, Saturday morning, 12.30, just past midnight. Quick shot by Major, wider than that. 9.30 Pacific time, Friday night. Technically, it's Saturday, 12.30 a.m. On the East Coast, on September 3rd. It will be in either Minnesota or Buffalo for the game two. Game one will be Wednesday night in either Anaheim or Portland. Eight and a half to go. These two teams are battling for the right to get to the championship final. Alex Hicks had a hat trick in game two. That's a nice play up. Minnesota changing. He comes in three on two, trying to work around the goaltender, and it's stopped nicely by Billy Pye, and he hangs on. 8.14 to go. 
here in regulation. Billy Pine knocked down again. Down here on the bench, the Buffalo bench with Mark Major. Mark, you're coming off here. It's a tight situation. Big goal, obviously. It seems like you guys are more effective shorthanded, but nonetheless, now do you change your style, try to hold on here? Uh, no, I think we just keep going at them the way we have been for the whole game. You know, but uh, when we get uh, chances, we got to hit the net. Like, I go down there and I miss the net. No need for it. I put on net, things are going to happen. And uh, if we keep going the way we are, we're going to the finals, baby. All right, good luck. 8-14 remaining in regulation as Mark Major just came off the bench. And uh, Jim was kind enough to get us an interview. It's kind of like interviewing the guy after winning the, uh, the big sprint. Eight minutes, three seconds to go for a marathon race. And you'd like to get his reaction. Here's Shoot coming in. Shoot has a screen man in front. It was Hannes who almost tipped that one, but did not get the stick on it. 7.50 to go. In regulation, Buffalo leading. Socio coming in. Rister stopped by Pye. Tried to block the pass out. Beccarelli has it. Throws it toward the net. Goes up to the uh, left point. Now Hannes able to steal it. Hannes, nice pass in front for Hanson on the backhand. He's in. John Hanson has the target center electrified on a beautiful passing play. And a gorgeous move in front, and Minnesota ties it up. One of the few times tonight, Buffalo turns it over right there. You saw the turnover. Buffalo taking the puck back towards their own goal. Then it's the skills of John Hansen taking over. Hansen had enough speed to come across the crease, and the goaltender, Vitusi, can't keep up with him. Nice pass, but watch Hansen. Protect, hold, and a quick move to the forehand. But that all started with a turnover. Buffalo trying to take the puck back towards his own goal it hurts and minnesota ties it up jim if there was a still photographer shooting toward the net he could have had a bobby or like shot after that goal as you saw hansen through the air flying through the legs like Gore did against the st louis blues in the stanley cup final back in the very early 70s 708 to go famous hockey photo pull down more penalty buffalo chris bergerot who couldn't stop almost ran right into the referee and Minnesota, tying it up with momentum, now goes on the power play when we come back to the target center. Seven minutes, three seconds remaining in the mini game, and we're tied at one. The Minnesota will have the extra man in a moment. Football fans, get ready for Sports Illustrated's exclusive NFL team kickoff kit. Free with your paid subscription to SI. Just tell us your favorite team. Cowboys! Packers! 49 and we'll give you more than ever before. This is incredible. <laughs> I love it. Your team kickoff kit starts with your official 1994 team video. Free Cowboys video? Free Brown video? If I got a free Giants video, I'd be the luckiest man in the world. Oh, man. Where can I get it? It's an inside look at your favorite team. Brought to you as only Sports Illustrated can. And there ain't no surprise. Your team kickoff kit also brings you this authentic NFL team cap free. It's an unbelievable football package that no real fan can be without. Call now. Use your credit card. And you'll get 54 issues of SI for only $1.47 an issue. Save over 50% off the cover price. And your incredible team kickoff kit is free. Nobody gets you into football like Sports Illustrated. Get into it. I'm here with a goal scorer, John Hanson. John, obviously a quick break, a great move. We're going to take a look here on the monitor. Tell us what happened. Well, I don't know, they had a turnover at center ice, and uh, Timmy Hans made a great pass over to me. Sent me in on a breakaway. I just got lucky, made a good move, and scored right there. One of the few times that Buffalo has turned the puck over, obviously your best asset is that transition. No stopping you guys once you turn that puck over. Well, it's definitely our game is all speed, you know. From there, that's all we take it, you know. See what happens after that. Here we got a big power play right now. i got to watch it. But they've given up four power uh, short-handed goals this evening, three. In game two, and now one here. So Minnesota's got to watch that, especially the cross-surface passes, which Beccarelli's been picking off. Awesome. Moore goes wide of that with the backhander. Minnesota, two for seven power play in game two, 0 for 1 here in the minigame. Young is set up. Young waiting. He'll have a shot. Whisper waiting, waiting, shooting wide of the net. Beccarelli will get it. This time he'll just try to clear it out, but he can't clear it. Moore keeps it in. Now all 
Norman Moore, 625 regulation, 120 penalty. 1-1 one, one hockey in the minigame. Young back. Here's Moore trying to tee it up in his skate. That was nearly dangerous for Minnesota. Big chance here. John Bassman, the defenseman for Buffalo, has lost his stick. So obviously Minnesota, I think, is going to go right to that tee without the stick. Moore shooting, save, rebound, and clear by Hicks. Westman will quickly go to the bench. And J. Neal comes on for Buffalo. 50 seconds in the penalty. 550. In the minigame, Young coming in. Young shot, save, rebound there, cleared by Jane Neal. Keep in mind, if this game is tied, we go to a shootout to decide the winner of the Eastern Conference. Olin passes and heads off. He passes to the man who took his position. Randy Scarter is on. Hannes is on. Shot by Hanson, blocked by Beccarelli. In the skates, Beccarelli comes out, and Buffalo is thinking, oh, here. Beccarelli with Neal. Beccarelli shooting, save, rebound wide. As Pye just kicked it past Jay Neal. Buffalo gets back 10 seconds in the penalty. David Shoot coming in. He drops it for Tim Hannis. He shoots wider than that. Hanson now goes after it. Here comes Cerrone on the surface. Carter will tee one up. Oh, that was a good shot wider than that. Cerrone now comes back out, but Hannis went back to play it. And goes on a defense. Hicks comes it back in and front scores! Jason Cerrone puts it home for Buffalo. They lead it 2-1 to one with 4.50 to go. Very aggressive move by the goaltender, Billy Pye. And Bill made the first save, but the rebound becomes a problem. Buffalo, it's kind of a two-on-two. -two. Nothing much dangerous from this point. Now watch the shot. There's the rebound. Now Pye has to scramble back. And while he's getting back, the cross pass comes right through his feet. Don't blame the goaltender. Look at this. How can Bill Pye do anything other than take the passer? And Cerrone is wide open in front. So Minnesota, although it was a two-on-two, -two, look at how far Pye came out. But then the man coming in from behind the play, Jason Cerrone, has a wide open net. Minnesota gets too many people caught up the floor, and they pay for it. What a terrific shot, and the pass was almost too tight. For Cerrone to handle, almost in his skates too much. You saw he just was man able to manage and put it inside that post and give Buffalo a 2-1 lead only moments after they killed off a power play. Four and a half to go. Noel Ron comes in. He'll crank the trap shot. He has the goaltender beat. He missed it at. And Dringer goes after it. Buffalo comes out two on two. Nimitz passes across for Socio. Lenny looks across the surface as Hendry. John gets a shot off, stop, rebound, save, another rebound, Kosho couldn't get it, poking after LeMay, now from behind, back checking is Socio, number 20, Len comes in around Jim Howe, knocked down from behind, by Ray Larson, big check behind the net, and Minnesota comes out, Jim Howe hooked down from behind, looked for a penalty, referee felt there was a dive, in fact, the referee looks like he has a swimming suit on, and he's Watering himself off from that splash. 3.40 to go in the minigame. Buffalo leads 2-1. to one. Here comes Moore in. He's as young to the right. Matusi will make sure Young is not involved in the play. And he hangs on. 3.31 to go. Buffalo leading 2-1. to one. The winner of this minigame will move on to the championship to play the winner of the Portland Rage and I'm Bullfrog Series. That series getting underway in actually just a few minutes out in uh, Portland. And we'll have the final game September 3rd at 12.30 a.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. We'll have a repeat next Monday. This is game two of the championship here on the news. Uh, normal RHI time slot at 7 o'clock next Monday night. But you can see it live again. That break here on the bed. 9.30. Bad break on the bench here. Jason Cerrone had to come off because one of the wheels on his skate was a little damaged. So the chassis actually is damaged. He was going out on the floor. He scored the last goal. Now he's on the bench. Young gets it back. Olin gets a shot off. Stopped in front. And Buffalo works it out. Guess who? Beccarelli comes out. Got a man on the right side. It's Socio. Looks back for Beccarelli. Now has the shot. Scores! Lance Socio! As again, the defense just peeled away from Lenny Socio. And he got a golden scoring chance, and it's 3-1 Buffalo with 3.18 to go. Great use of the passing.
here. Our first starts with Beccarelli because he gave Socio the puck early enough where Socio could then let the play develop in front of him. And from that point, Socio uses the patience. Watch Beccarelli. Gets it across. Now Socio waits. One man just slides out of the way. And then Bill Pye goes down. Socio had control all the way. He goes up top, goes to the pump. He's an excited man. The Buffalo leads by two. Former NHL defenseman Brad Park wrote a book a long time ago called Play the Man. It's tougher to do in the RHI because you can't stop and pick up. But that time, the defense did not play the man. And they let Socio walk right in and get that great scoring chance, almost opening up the Red Sea for him and allowing him to come right in. 2.56 to go now in the minigame as Buffalo is up by two. Craig, I'm down here on the bench with the goal scorer, Len Socio. Len, tell me about the goal. Obviously, it looks like a lot of patience. You kind of used Beccarelli that time as a little decoy. I think everybody thought I was going to Beccarelli. Every, Beccarelli's been hot the last two games. I just kept the puck myself. Everybody went by me, and I had an open net. Did you think he was going to give you the puck so early on that two-on-one? I wasn't sure. I was waiting to set myself up for a one-time shot, and he gave it to me right away, and I just I just held patience. All right, it worked for you. Sounds like he's uh, pumped up also. Second of the team in goals this year with 20. Eight power play, a big one there. Three-on-one. Hicks comes in, has Henry waiting. Back to Neal, shooting. Stopped that time by Pye. Here comes Minnesota, the outlet to save and shoot one-on-one. Shoot with a nice head fake around Be uh, Beccarelli. Shooting save, rebound by Hanson. Wider than that, 2.32 to go. Make that 2.35 as the puck goes up over the glass. Wow. John Hanson, the leading scorer in the playoffs with his 11th goal in game two, number 12 here in the minigame. Dennis Baruch is not a happy camper right now. The head coach, Dennis Baruch, goes to take off the mics that we put on the coaches. It's been that kind of night, really, for the Arctic Blast. And the story continues into the, into the minigame. I think uh, Dennis was hoping that with the slate wipe clean, it's a new game, but it really, it's been the same story. Buffalo, a shorthanded goal. Buffalo, too many good scoring chances. Moving in unchecked. And Minnesota really not having the chances or using their offensive firepower. A lot of credit has to go to this Buffalo D. They're very disciplined. Larry Olin comes in. Still plenty of time to go. Passes in front, and Fatusi made a big stop. He stopped the pass. Now Dave LeMay, head fake. Around the, uh, Leyland, and goes wide of the net. Bacusi with five points in the regular season. Beccarelli steals it, gets through three blasts, comes in, shoots, score! He allowed for the legs to open. And Beccarelli has his sixth goal of the evening, his second of the minigame, as Buffalo looks to put away Minnesota. Well, Craig, his coach told us before the game that Beccarelli, he felt, was the best player in the league. I think he has a good argument going tonight. Again, his presence on the floor is intimidating Minnesota into making bad plays. The turnover, now watch. The fake shot, and again, he keeps it right along the floor, just catching the goaltender shuffling. But Beccarelli is just a one-man wrecking crew. He's outthinking Minnesota by getting into the right spot. And in the hands of a goal scorer, he goes tweeners again. Looks like a commanding lead, 4-1 to one Buffalo. Beccarelli waited for Bill Pye's pads to open. We've talked, talked to a lot of coaches and players this year who've talked about over-pursuing the puck. You have to have a safety valve back there. And again, two Minnesota players came up. And they were both out of position when Beccarelli stole the puck. And all night long, Minnesota has not anticipated making a mistake. And Buffalo has capitalized on it throughout. Beccarelli again. Shot and score! And trickled by Pye! Beccarelli has a hat-trick in the minigame. And seven goals in the evening. <laughs> and Buffalo is all but finishing off Minnesota. And you see Beccarelli there? He was just saying, hey, slash me as hard as you can. It doesn't matter. He's going to take a slash here as he goes to the outside. There it comes. Chops him on the arm. It doesn't bother him. He just sneaks it home. He's finding any kind of room possible. Again, the confidence. It's not really a great scoring chance. But with Beccarelli, everything is a great scoring chance. He takes it right to the goal. Look at him. He's going right back in Minnesota and said, hey, slash, slash, it doesn't bother me. I'm Superman tonight. 
And he showed that case. No, no, he's Michael Jackson with one glove there, Jim. <laughs> 123 to go. Buffalo dumps it in there looking for more. And Buffalo, unless Minnesota has a miraculous comeback, even by RHI standards here with a minute 14 to go, Buffalo will host game two and perhaps a mini game if it's tied and will be in Buffalo on Friday night, 9.30. Live Pacific time, 12.30 in the morning on the one East Coast. Minute, with the final game of the championship series and the presentation in the RHI. Minnesota had an outstanding regular season. No one was better. They were 18-3-1. They finished up very strong. They did not have a regulation loss in 16 games. And that streak continued right through the playoffs until they lost to Pittsburgh in game one of that series but they were outclassed here tonight by the buffalo stampede a courageous effort for buffalo the stampede were beaten at home in game one they took the flight today both teams on the same flight and buffalo on the road has uh, done the almost unthinkable from an octave last few points beating them in game two and now beating them here in the mini game quick shot by ron is stopped by Vatusi. seven seconds to go Major takes it out. He gets one more shot on goal, and that is it. John Beccarelli with a hat trick in the minigame. Four goals in game two, a seven-goal night. And Buffalo wins game two, 11-6, and they win the minigame 5-1 to one to win the Eastern Conference of the RHI in advance to the championship series against the winner of Anaheim and Portland. What an effort by the men in black. I got John Beccarelli right now. John, seven goals in the two games. Eh, one man team, I don't know, but you sure come put up tonight when the pressure was on the line. Uh, tonight it was a big game for us. We had to come in and win, and uh, we we're playing back to back, and uh, I got my rest, and uh, I just came out and I want to play my heart out tonight to win it. Uh, all the guys pulled together. We played a tremendous game. I mean, uh, everything I was shooting tonight was going in. I had uh, five beats tonight. Didn't matter where I shot the puck from, I had him beat. He's a great goalie. I'm not against him, but everyone played great. I mentioned that, John. Perhaps the confidence. Such a big boost. Every time you got over the center line, you were looking to go right to the goal. Well, that's one of my uh, tips. When I started playing hockey, I was always a goal scorer, and uh, I just take the pucks in the net, and if a guy's open, I'll dish. If a guy's not open, I'm shooting, and uh, when I see mesh, it's going in. All right, go join the teammates. Thank you, Jim. John Beccarelli, the star of the game. But how about a hand for that man, Coach Chris McSorley. He's won two straight ECHL championships. Now he'll have the chance to win the second straight RHI championship, perhaps against his former team, the Anaheim Bullfrogs. Some more with the coach down to Jim. Chris, I've got to give your team a big compliment. As much emotion you play with, you execute your game plan to a T. Tell us about tonight's action, both games. Well, I, our team was very focused.